Hello everyone, and welcome to Barb Rule with the Wandering Inn. And also Sheepdog, and also I say Kydra. Hey dude, how's it going? Hello. Am I close enough to my mic for a podcast? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Cool. It, 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 needs, it needs to feel like it's a, an ASMR without any yeah. actual ASMR stuff going on. Bit of extra bass. I can do that. Sweet. I mean, yeah, my, my voice is, is fairly... <laughs> fairly base in general anyway i'll just mm. also close up that uh it depends how much sleep i have have had yeah yeah i can see that <coughs> i can see that being a thing yeah can we have alexa join in for the asmr maybe i don't actually have an alexa in my room it's too dangerous <laughs> you you, you so. know like one uh just just to just a political meme for a second uh, I I saw a joke about everyone complaining about them putting microchips in their um in their in their vaccines and stuff, and yeah. then at the same time they're like they're like on they're like on their phones and on their uh on their computers being like being like oh my god all the microchips they're gonna track us and know everything we're doing and everything we're saying and then they're like Alexa play the rude sad storm. <laughs> Yep. Yep. So true. So true. Like, in terms of, like, political leadings and conspiracy, I don't give a fuck, oh, but man. I love it when people are stupid. Yeah. Yep. Alexa, yeah. Alexa wouldn't listen to me unless I say Alexa, except all the time so she can hear me say Alexa. Yeah. It's kind of creepy but when you think about it. Th this is the thing, is the great thing about Alexa is it provides content without any effort for loads and loads of Twitch streamers and YouTubers because they get yeah. to shout at Alexa for, for being like... That's true. I only vaguely said her name, like, whispering, and now she's, like, yeah. fired up, and it's like, Alexa, shut up! I've seen so many, like, streams on YouTubers run that skit. Yeah, as I don't have a cat, I could bring Alexa in instead because... Mm. That's the other thing. It's like you can get the cat as well in the room to are occasionally you, walk in. Are like you, I'm, are you I'm not pointing at Tash. Are you, are, you like, send, are you sending shots at Tash? <laughs> no, like this is this is like a. It's not her. It's a genre. It's it's a it's a whole big thing, and and she she's part of it, and she I'm sorry, she's leading the charge, but but there, there's a whole thing. I think, I think her cat's leading the charge because her cat literally. Yeah, cats are leading the thing. Really. Literally takes up the whole uh, stream and. I, I think it's always hilarious when, when Tasha's cat comes in and then she just gives up on streaming for a bit because it like lies on her keyboard and switches scenes. Oh, and... yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, uh... that's great content, you know? It is. It's, it's so true. It, it's, just, it's just goodness. Yeah. Watching a cat do cat things. Like, I like how we've gone back to worshipping them as a culture again. Like, oh, Egypt yeah. had it right. Uh, sorry, like my my brain just stumbled over um over like Egypt and building and slaves and building pyramids and mm, you know all true. that all that bad stuff. True. And I was I was like, there's a joke in there, but it, it's it's probably inappropriate and offensive. And yeah, you know. you're probably so I'll, I'll just I'll just somewhere. let I'll just mention it as a sidebar and slide on on to new things. Mm, um, yeah, fair. So you. Have had your last episode uh, on Sunkist. Well, mm, like the thing is, is there's always possibilities, isn't there? But for for the main yeah. show, for the like, you know, yeah, both both of my characters, um, or I could say all of my characters, yeah, uh, are, are now in there somewhere, existing, doing stuff. Mm. Um. Well, and I think it's going to be really cool once. Uh, Sunkist is over, and I do the um the kind of like module style thing where yeah. I'll basically give all the information. Like Alex, gonna be one of the big NPCs in the city that yep. people can interact with and stuff. And I mean, technically speaking, probably depending on how the GM runs the show, uh, so could like Christian even. Mm, yep, and I think Alec will be a lot easier to get a like your head around as as a gm putting him in a setting cuz i i feel like his his mannerisms and his motivations are, are fairly fairly sort of overt not like there's there's an air of secrecy but it's yeah. also 
an air of secrecy that doesn't really hide anything. Yeah. It, most of him is actually on show. It's just he he likes to give the uh, the guys that there's more. Whereas I I, I pity the GM that has to GM Mac and Marlow. So <laughs> well, uh, Mac... that has to like play them as NPCs. That's uh... Mac, Mac and Mac and Marlow and Rose. I think uh, are a, a, an entity or entities that can be. If someone wants to go into that, they can. You know, they can do it themselves. They're in Chicago. They're a long way away. Um, mm. it, it's. <laughs> It's 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 one of those things where, like, as far as I'm concerned, and feel free to disagree a little bit here, but I feel like Mac and Marlo and Rose, like, we we with that final scene, I feel like we left them in a in a nice spot in in, in kind of like a, yeah. a wrap up thing. Yeah, for sure. It's it's I, I I would have no issues with if anyone wanted to dig them out because they they like them. Yeah. But equally, where they are narratively is kind of like a, a a pretty peaceful spot, and like it wouldn't take too much to be like, oh, everyone's in trouble. And Mac yeah. comes back, therefore, so like it 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 could happen feasibly, but equally, um, they yeah, they they're they're all in a comfortable, I, comfortable ish spot as much as it can be. It it it's funny because in my notes I've had, uh, when I've had like when Hydra leaves, um have a Mac Marlow Hamilton Gibbs uh, scene. Yep. Um with with Rose and, and everything just to like tie everything off cuz it's it's one thing I like um uh, you know like I think both you and me would be satisfied if we had a little scene where he was like he was like mm. in a vampire dungeon in the inquisition mm. and he was like like him and Rose were trying to figure out how to escape, but things look dire, and you know it's just yeah. having the the outro for Mac was great, but it was the outro for the character, not for the show. Yeah, and having like a, a an outro for his for Mac and Marlow and etc. for the show was kind of nice to do, and like hmm. when as as Vandy and also Tess has been going down this really worrying route that she has no idea she's going down yeah um i was like it would be a really cool way to tie it in and like show off where mac is so like not yep. lo like i was still thinking about it halfway through the show and mm. then we had the the test stuff and i was like okay cool we could have a premonition i was like hydra hydra do you mind playing back for a little bit or like like revisiting back and hydra was like yeah let's do this so uh <laughs> I didn't have to do anything, to be fair. No, no. It, uh, I just I, had to... You just had to be there, basically. To and shift be... my shoulders very slightly. Yeah. And and be cool with it as well. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like... Uh, as... It's... It's it's slightly different on a show, because as a player on a show, as a cast member on a show, you, you, you want to do things not just for yourself and your character, but also for the people who like your character and... Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, so but it, it, it's yeah. I don't like doing things without permission from yeah. the people who like masterminded I like the, the characters. I like the contrast of the. It, it's nice having occasionally players that have a lot of conflict and like have a happy ending instead of perpetual conflict. As a so, I, I like the the neat and tidy wrap. Well, I say neat and tidy, but the I won't call it happily ever after, but happy for now. Flipping Content. Burgers. Like, yeah, it, this... it's. Yeah. It's a nice contrast to the outro. Yeah. So so it's a nice release of tension in that sense, which I which I think is is good. Uh, yeah. Whereas Alec is someone that could quite easily get himself into trouble. Yeah. Well, one of one of the things about uh, Sunkist is I don't think any of the characters will ever be completely content or happy if they stay in Weirgate. Yeah, because Weirgate is going to be turmoil and uncertainty and a little bit of like e extra added darkness and stuff. Like, yeah. even if the characters themselves don't have, you know, always tragic, always you know, like oh my god, life sucks, everything's pooping on me, I'm I'm just a small fish in a big pond. Uh, mm. Like, there's no stability in 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 Weirgate, um, yep. for anyone. So yep. anyone who stays is not gonna be happy. 
Um, yes. <clears throat> and it was a... Like, that kind of works for Cassius. Yep. Um, and it could have... It could, it, like, technically speaking, if Mac had kind of, you know, brought in and taken over and gone down his cha chaotic route, um, like, he could have he could have been cool with that as well, but... Like, yeah, like Marlowe a, a, couldn't handle that. Shit it could have been his Gotham. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, from Alex's point of view, it was he was kind of hoping to push Cass to become prince mm. and let go of this silly democracy idea. But because because he's very pessimistic about uh, what's going on, but he's also got his duty to his location now, which yeah. is something to. Uh, tie him there for now until um, I think maybe if, like if if he turned someone one day he might leave them in charge of his turf and leave if that some he was driven to it but I don't know who knows what would yeah. who knows what the future holds I, I think like just I, I don't have like a, a, a plan mapped out I think like like Alec may end up in a situation where he's in, he's got like his castle, but he's also kind of, it's also a little bit his prison in the way that yeah. he's, he's safe in Weirgate. If, if he like goes off somewhere else, like the Sabbat may come after him just for what he did. Yes. Yeah. Which, so they should. Yeah. 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 Which, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, that, that's just my GM brain being like, that's probably where it would go if we carried on. Um, yeah, for sure. I'll, pro I'll probably include that in the module, you know, in the yeah. in the sun kissed thing where it's like. But um, yeah. Uh, should we should we talk a little bit about uh, kind of like your thoughts on sun kissed and, uh, yeah. and and things? Talk about all sorts. Um, so yeah. where to, where to start? Um, I mean, so Mac Marlow and and Gibbs, obviously. You didn't know about Hamilton Gibbs as the third personality for a long time. Mm, um, yep. That was a lot of fun. Because <laughs> mm. every time he yeah. turned up, you were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, Mac was totally fine to, to go with it. And yeah. the contrast of Marlowe, who was like, you're a demon in my head tormenting me. Leave me alone. Mm. <laughs> like, he mm. was literally viewing him as like a, an inner tormenting demon. You know, it's it's something that only happened since he got turned, so therefore yeah. it was evil, um, I, which wasn't too helpful <clears throat> to resolve his mm. stresses in the world. Well, I'm sure you noticed, but uh, Gibbs was actually like antagonistic towards Mac much more, and when yeah. when the switch happened to uh, to Marlowe, uh, Hamilton Gibbs was like offering, like he was still a little bit, you know, kind of creepy and like what the fuck, but um, yeah. He was like offering advice and trying to help at the same time. Yeah, yeah, um, that was yeah. That the Max personality was that you could criticize him and he'd take it as encouragement. Yeah, sort of like why are you doing a bad job of this? He's like, well, that, in his mind, that's that's what a, a boss is like. <laughs> yeah, mean to you because you've messed up most of the time. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's so, like the no, angry I, I police that. chief trope, where it's like, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's like, yeah, okay, you're you're in the movie too. Um. <laughs> I liked, yeah, I, I liked the whole, um, <clears throat> I liked the whole trio aspect of that. It was, uh, it it was uh, neat to delve into several aspects of one person. Yeah, uh, which was, which was neat. I like, I like that. Um, yeah, and uh, there, there's a lot of people who've really enjoyed your take on the uh, Malkavian because origi originally, and I, I still maintain. I understand why you didn't go for it, but originally we were talking over a few ideas for Malkavians, and we had an idea of like a, a, a like not street youth, but you know what I mean, kind of like a, yeah. a, a younger, originally younger street kid yeah. who did like they were an artist, and all of their um like visions of the future were graffiti art on the city so yeah i think that would have been really interesting really cool it, however it would be something you know like for the where future. I, yeah, yeah yeah it's um i i have my own quirks as to why someone like mac is is a preference for me yeah. um 
I don't like, I prefer to be in some ways you could, you can sort of like say Mac is a little closer to home in comfort, but I, I don't, I prefer to have a, at least a contrast, a fairly strong contrast there. And, and it obviously it can be achieved if you're just role playing um, a dude that's a street artist and a vampire. That's obviously not me, but um, I, I like having a, no, we we can delve into that in a bit, but I've got yeah. some some t- tools in my belt now, GM wise, to also create um, the differences that I was looking for back then to mm. make make them seem more uh, playable. I would say, yeah, um, and I mean, I, uh, I I I for for myself, obviously, GMing and doing Sunkist and you know other GMing stuff. When I make when I make a player, I like to kind of push myself to do things I'm not good at or to do things that I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. But at the same time, as a player, it does jank sometimes where you're like, you you know, if I haven't slept properly and then I have to jump into a show and I'm like, I get put into a situation that I'm not good with or it's not something mm. that I'm I, like my brain can't easily yep. handle. I like default back to base personality stuff, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm much. Yeah. Suddenly, the character feels like sometimes people don't even notice, and they're like, "Oh, that was really good," and I'm like, "Oh, thank you." And in my head, I'm like, "Man, that was the worst I've ever done. Like, that was so janky." And you know, because you know more about the character than yeah, yeah, than the it's, people it's, watching. Yeah, it, it that's it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. I, like Mac would even like I, I would if I were to make Mac again now. Not that I would, but yeah. if I were to go back in a time machine, like it's nice to say oh, I'll do it all the same. But in reality, I, I'd make a couple of edits. Now yeah. I know more about the setting, yeah. and uh, I mean, sort of some expectations, etc. So you, you, um, you, Vandy, Tash, and uh, Tessachka. All it's it's all of your first times with VTM, yeah. So you've all done a great job with your character, you know, because like you're coming in with no law knowledge or anything like that, um, yeah. and it, it, it's it's one of those things where like I would imagine now you guys know more law, but it's all like specific to your character stuff more than anything else. You know, if mm. if, if I was like tell me about the salubri, I think. All of you would be like, "What are the salubri?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's 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 like, for example, when Hydra started playing, uh, we started coming up with Alec. Uh, he looked into the Sabbat and into uh, into the Simiche, uh, like a fair amount. But there's yeah. no there's no reason for Alec if you're playing Alec to like run off and like go deep dive into the Nosferatu or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, 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 there is a few a few characters, I guess, that I, I look at VTM now, and I'm like, okay, I, there, there's some other things I would find interesting. I I could yeah. probably do a hundred Malkogans, and I'd like them all, just because I'd like the the challenge of breaking the tr- existing tropes. You can do that with all of them, obviously. Oh but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, I, I I like the idea of yeah basically what you do with your npcs which is taking a stereotype and taking something like what tarantino does with every film taking a thing you know and making it different yeah and uh, it's it's um it's it's unfortunate because this has become a phrase that has a different meaning almost but uh it's subverting expectations you know like you you expect the commissar to be angry and shoot you it's really interesting if he's angry and like a mother hen. Yeah. So if if you do it in a way that's still true yeah. to to the, the the core of it, then it still works just beautifully. And if anything, it's it's better because it's a different take on the same thing. Like as long as you've got that core there, that's still like, oh yeah, I can see it's a commissar. Um, and and then they've got their uniqueness. Then, then that, that's just a great thing. Uh, do you want to buy any followers? Oh, always, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who does? Who doesn't buy followers nowadays? Ah, oh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I could sell you some. <laughs> oh, 
dear. Um, so yeah, it's um, it, it it's it's one of those, and it's it's slightly easier as a GM to do those things because you don't have to deep dive too far. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to react in as many situations yeah. as well. <laughs> like I'll, I'll a... say like the easiest character for me to play was Clay, uh, Clay Frazier. Yeah. The hardest character for me to play is Nathan Fortuna. Yeah. Um, just because Nathan is way off my my, I I I have to spend like five minutes while you guys are all talking i'm spending like five minutes in my head getting into his mentality so i can react appropriately and in time yeah um but yeah no it's uh oh here's a question for you because we did touch on it in the episode but sure did you what do you think of kale katen now that you know like his deal and, and everything? yeah i like that i i my my feelings now is like oh it's a shame i he didn't like i would have i'm curious what he would have been like around tess for example yeah. if it was just him and tess in a room yeah um and if anyone else had met him first before mac did then oh how things may have turned out differently um, oh yeah yeah but but that could be said for pretty much every interaction i guess as to you know if if uh i don't know lamia met mac as the first person of the coterie what yeah. what what the hell would have he would have just been sucker punched i guess but <laughs> like i don't think it would have ended well um yeah but yeah so yeah i i, I like the tw- quirk on it though it's um it's interesting which is because it because it makes you then wonder a lot of other things, which is what I and it's nice when a character does that. It makes you think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and your brain goes down a little trail of thoughts. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good feeling. And it, it it's like I agree with you in the whole like it would be it's a shame that that we didn't see more of Kale to see more of him and like more of his character, but it's also kind of nice in the sense of for the afterwards, if anyone wants to take the game further, they have a fairly open book with, uh, with Kale to kind of interpret how they like. Yeah. Um, it's the same with like the, the, um, the court, uh, and a few other like, uh, like especially over the river factions, uh, we didn't see a super load of them, so that's going to be fairly open into like creating your own characters with like a very yeah. basic base. Yeah, yeah. Um, It'd be interesting to see people run a thin blood campaign. I guess, mm-hmm. assuming the court don't disappear imminently. Well, the court, the, the, the court of Bruha. Oh, Mo- of course, Bruhar. of course. Uh, Drake, Drake are the ones who are. Oh, uh, Drake, the that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Drake. Yeah. The, 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 the okay. So if you don't mind, because this is mostly supposed to be about you, uh, just to like touch on the drag, because I don't think they're gonna come up before the end of the show. Um, I'll talk mm-hmm. about them properly another time. But basically, Dreg is just one charismatic thin blood who is looking after all of the thin bloods. It's not mm-hmm. a faction. It's just so. Technically speaking, um, yes. Dreg was responsible for the whole fire thing, but the guy is just looking after all of the thin bloods. So it was it was like yeah. some of the thin bloods did the thing while he wasn't paying attention, and you know, mm. it's this whole big thing. Like it's not a faction even. It, it it's just it's just like nomadic thin bloods who who drop in and they're like, I've heard this is a good place to stay. And he's like, Yes, come under my wing and I will look after you. And then. You know, they they mm. run off and kill people and blow shit up. Yeah, but he's and like, then everything blows up. He's like, no, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but um, additional fun story. Um, uh, Tal- Talia uh, was the uh, like used uh, some of the people in some of the thin bloods in Drake to blow up the yep the blessed place. So I do like the fact that that Mac has left um, a, a great many memes will just forever be things that you can reference for him which is the, the which is cent- nice the, the centimeters the centimeters um, uh, yeah. you know you, you can you can uh, throw 5k around here and there um 
I, I would I would say like like there I'd say there's definitely a couple of memes for Mac, but more it's like the scenes. There's like yeah, I mean the meme is the the, yeah. the, the verbal cue to the memory of the scene. Yeah, it is the 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 time he uh the time he had a meeting with a Ventru Anok. Yes, uh, and uh, tried tried to <laughs> tried to deal tried with... to uh, not even outsmart him, just just tried to <laughs> rely on him being clueless. Mm. Which he wasn't. <laughs> he didn't do what they should do in the movies, which was the problem. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, uh... It's, it, it was a, it was a learning experience and hilarious. <laughs> Mac did meet the Blair, which is the uh, the Tremere drunk, mm. the only Tremere in the city. Yes, he did. He did. Well, I get Marlow got to do the talking though, but Mac Mac watched. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, like, in a sandbox, you have things that you think are going to be super important, but Mm. as time goes on, a narrative, like, reveals itself to a certain extent. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, yeah, like, the, the whole burning, like, they, you guys figured it out, and you guys have, like, the basic details and stuff, but it's, like... There's no real justice for Winnie, you know. It, it, it's it's like yeah. it's like if you if you hunt down and murder all of the like thin bloods who were part of the conspiracy, a lot of them were just a lot of them were just oppressed and having a shitty life, and were just kind of like you know like got the ingredients or or said yeah right in meetings you know like mm. w- w- they're, they're... there's no consequence of not killing them so yeah it, it's like there, there was no inherent need therefore to do it and and so it, you're down to the moral the morality of it being the defining thing and it mm, there wasn't necessarily a particular thirst for revenge no for revenge's sake within our party so I, I, I think i think part, yeah i think part of that is just winnie as well being like a chill dude who's like you know shit, shit happens, yeah man. <laughs> yeah and it was it was it although it was personal in that sense it it was it wasn't targeted on him per se it was no. targeted on the the like a larger group he was connected to yeah so therefore the the if it was just him that had been set on fire it would have been different yeah, because if if they there were would like have been the, fuck that the dude motivation. In yeah. yeah, exactly. There would have been like okay, well this is clearly personal and targeted and that that therefore requires a, an approach that is uh you know consistent with that. But instead yeah. it was a bit more like okay, there's this grander thing that's happened and, and well, yeah. It it's not great, but yeah, I guess one one thing that I think would uh would would have been nice to know is that Obviously, it hadn't happened again in that length of time, but to sort of have that knowledge secured, I think Mac would have probably gone if he had like his his reign of the city. Uh, probably would have. It might have been Marlow actually that would would have taken more to that route of. Mm. Now Marlow's thinking straight. He might have, but yeah. when Marlow was around, he wouldn't really have cared if all of the kindred got set on fire. Yeah, yeah. Or he wasn't sure if he cared or not, which was the problem. So he wasn't he, particularly motivated to look into it for that reason. Yeah, I, I, I think for 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 Mac and for Marlo, you you had like Mac had a a, a very like weird um view on it where he didn't really care about anything, but at the same time he wanted to like. He had he had like a purpose which drove him, uh, you know. Yeah. So he wasn't like invested in justice, but he acted out justice in certain ways, you know. Um, yeah, and that it was kind of like skewed and and bizarre justice. Um, yeah, he <clears throat> he was he was an actor in a film that would get halfway through one scene would move into a different film. Yeah. So it was it was also like he lacked focus to keep him on one task like if halfway yeah. through a job he got given another it would be a okay well that's my job now off to that scene uh, um 
and uh, um, uh, Marlowe, of course, is all about right and wrong. Uh, yeah. Black and white has difficulty with grey, but um, his view of it is more like vampires evil, just in general. Um, so that yeah. that leads to like, how can you judge pseudo vampires for burning a whole load of vampires? Exactly, exactly. Like, like he's he. Like, I I feel like I feel like Marlo looked at that and just went. That's really not for me. Like I, I don't. Yeah, it's it wasn't a, his battle. It's it's just not. I have no dog in this race. Uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah. Yeah, like e- even if they were targeting him, it wouldn't. Nec- it would have been like, yeah, they're targeting me because I'm a vampire, mm. not because I'm not because I'm me. So they wouldn't. Mm. There was just not that motivation to look into it. But Which... I expect he'll think differently about it now because yeah. Rose will. What Rose will effectively remind him of the person that's still there. Yeah. And so I think he he will come around a bit to it, but and be ever so cautious. Like Rose is kind of a clean slate with no you know, like like Marlo has all of the like fucked up things Mac did in his head. Yeah. And so I think that's part of the dichotomy for him where he's just like vampires can't be good cuz look at this motherfucker and that's me. Um mm. where whereas no. Rose Rose like the, the, I don't have any like definitive things, but in my head, Rose basically being a decent person for the most part, and and, and like you know a vampire but fairly human, it is yeah. going to have him be like, well, you know, maybe I just got a bit unlucky or something, or maybe maybe I could have been stronger. Um, yeah, knows? yeah, he he would. Yeah, I I think his mind would probably go to uh, blaming himself until she then talks him out of it, or Gibbs does, or yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Ma- or Mac does, like or Max Mac backs him around does. a little bit. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, exactly. The 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 main thing I think, aside from, uh, we'll talk about Alex in a sec. I think, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, Alex, sorry, um, is the outro for Mac, the the like proper outro for Mac, which hmm. happened when we like switch characters. Yeah, like you know, I don't think we've talked about it much. Um, hmm. so I was just wondering, you know, how you felt about it because obviously it's weird to outro a character in the middle of a campaign. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. like it's not unheard of, but it can be difficult to do. And like, just myself personally, I feel like we did a good job. <laughs> I would, I would. I would tell. I would say both of us could uh, have a pat on the back for that, and I'm yeah. I'm not not someone to toot their own horn. Um, it it seemed seemed good to me, like what, watching it back and and the feedback at the time. I got some lovely messages from people, just mm. um, DMs and comments and and such, with with some very some very nice things being said. Um, and, and it seemed like a a a reasonable. No, a, a good wrap, wrap up. It was, um, yeah. It was. Uh, it, it tugged on some strings. It explained a few things that sort of made sense all of along, and and there was a little bit of a, a, a resolution of character. Like it, it had the hallmarks of a good ending to a to his film. Let's yeah. say, yeah. Um, it was the it was within you all along type sort of you know realization of one's own potential a lot of the archetypal things that make a good ending were in that so i i think it um for for myself like as the storyteller um my goal was to kind of because for mac and for marlo everything was a film my goal was to kind of present a crisis and have a internal resolution, you know, mm. for, for for like him. So it's it's like very often in in certain films you have this like, oh my god, everything's terrible, blah blah blah, and it it generally comes down to the protagonist dealing it with with it in their own head. Yes. Um, and like coming to a resolution for their own internal crisis. Which is yeah. like mirrored by the external crisis. Yeah, it's 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 very rare in a TTRPG to have 
um, the enemy within from a psychological point of view being the the primary obstacle for the uh, for for the protagonist. It, it's normally you know the when enemy is something you can materialize as a, as an entity that needs to be defeated. Whereas there's there's so many good films where someone's challenge is their inability to overcome their own weakness. Let's say. Uh, and and that was that that was nice to see that within a, within a TTRPG as well because it's just not not done very much. Yeah, but I mean, look, what if we blow up five planets? <laughs> yeah, that would have that would have yeah that would have bought you some views. Definitely. Uh... No, I, I I think it was it, it was it ticked all the boxes that should be there. It it was um, surprising, somewhat inevitable. It, it wrapped it up. You had the 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 protagonist in this story overcoming their their core weakness mm. and you had a like a, a an open end of well i wonder what happens next to them after this on their next adventure and and that, that all just tied together very nicely for a good feels yeah yeah it, and like the thing i found interesting was uh mac marlo specifically was almost like frozen from when he was turned and like he mm. he was like uh, uh unsure of what to do unsure of his place like mac yeah. took over and he he was basically just a just a, a viewer just a, a an observer for ages and then when he came back he's like i don't know like i everything's so fucking like messed up what mm. do, what do i do what do i i don't even know what i think and then Granddad came in and it's like, raw shit, crisis. And then he's like, yeah. fuck it. Uh, like, all three of us, you know, all three of them kind of got together and had a resolution. Uh, they yeah. all kind of, like, made a little bit of um, development. They like, kind of developed as people a little bit. And then, mm -hmm. like, right, we all know what we got to do. Uh, Hamilton Gibbs was like, you know what you got to do. You just don't want to do it. And Max like, I can do it. But I'm also going to be a bit better. And then Marlo's like, yeah. I, I'm okay with this. Let's do it. And then they all kind of just like went off, uh, pulled the trigger, did all the things, and then and then took off and, mm. and like left the kind of unhealthy for them um, Weirgate stuff behind. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the other thing I like about it is that typically in a story like that, you're going to have a, for internal conflicts, you're like internal, I mean psychological, you're going to have another character that kind of helps you helps guide you through that yeah and it was a it was it, it's interesting because it was like although he kind of marlo put himself out a little bit as being like help i need help mm. and being incredibly alienating while doing so um it, it was interesting to see that it, it, like he wasn't there, there was no savior within the country that was going to sit down and be his um his shrink and and the the resolution came from a third his his meant his savior was effectively the, his other personality yeah which is which was just a nice little twist on it i guess um rather than the usual like having a having a shrink person that eventually one day you listen to and everything works that would have been far less satisfying yeah, yeah. um especially for a malkavian yeah it, it wouldn't have really been fun if uh, if cassius was like hey marlo these are your problems yeah. this is how you fix it and marlo goes yeah you're right okay and then like what yeah exactly well you'd have to do that i'm not going to listen to you today i'm not going to listen to you tomorrow one day it's like oh, i've had a now i'm going to listen to you <laughs> right all of it's that that can it's so hard to do that between players yeah so i like the fact it was done via an npc that was still one of the players kind of it was it was yeah i, I get weird as a gm sometimes i can't help yeah myself. That, I, it, that, that all worked nicely it it, it like uh, and and uh, i don't know how much you agree with this but in in terms of a show especially but i think it can translate very well to like private games and stuff is the to you don't you don't need to plot out every single second of a scene yeah but if you have an idea as a gm at least you know go to your players and be like yo i have this idea do you want to know about it or should i just hit you with it and like sometimes me and hydra would sit there and talk through like my thoughts as gm and his thoughts as a player 
and we'd kind of like figure things out through that and sometimes i'd be like yo i have this thing do you want to know about it or not and hydra's like nah nah uh, you're, you're good like i mm. like for this instance there's no talk needed i want to be surprised i want to i want to yeah yeah on, on it, it to it's... Be. so it's a mix of like legitimate um completely the out was... of the blue and a little yeah. bit of you know like figuring things out yeah 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 no i, I agree it, it, it's and an a good um a good campaign's got to have an element of re re revelation yeah. for me for me to sort of tickle me some people will be happier with sort of action adventure and just slapping stuff, but but uh, I, I, I like things to be revealed along the way. I mean, the, the, like you were talking earlier about how uh, the big bad, especially for your character, was in your own head. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, from what I know, you're more used to the kind of like, let's call it D&D &D trope of, you know, big bad and boss. Who, yeah, who, who's it, like I'm a dragon? Kill me. Um, yeah, I mean it's certainly the more common one. It's uh, tricky in a tricky in a way that, like, especially with Warhammer, there's this expectation that enemies are um, enemies are one of the enemy factions. Let's say. Yeah. I think v VTM is a much better opportunity to explore psyche yeah. than than some than the systems I would typically play. So so that was yeah uh, fresh. Yeah, I mean it, it's possible, but you have to do a lot of your own legwork for that, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, and you've got to have like you can do uh, like, you, you you can do it in Warhammer Fantasy, like easier. You know, you just need people to. It's doable. Yeah, yeah, you just need people to have families and relationships, yeah, and etc. And you know, you kind of work through it like that. It's but... doable. It, it's something that I I probably won't be dabbling with anytime soon no. through I, I i if i were to pick off my 10 current players a particular three then i reckon i could go down that route yeah but but i don't think it would work for the majority well um, I, not many people who come into it, it's like it's like what do you come into a system for you know yeah, like yeah. why i'm a fancy is more based like i have some ideas on it myself but that's because i sheepify things but um what do you come into Warhammer Fantasy for? It's not for uh, existential dread. It's for yeah, very, exactly. very real dread because there is yeah. a big demon gnawing on your leg. Um, but, you know, like that's mm. or, or like it, it's it's in in Vampire the Masquerade. There's this kind of like veil of supernatural, even as a kindred. You know, as a new vampire, you don't know about you know all of this supernatural shit, and you find out about it slowly. And it's always hidden behind like a thin, like semi-transparent, um, uh, like sheets. So you can kind of see creepy stuff. In mm. in in Warhammer, like your next door neighbor is a fucking orc who wants to headbutt you and you know burn down your house for no reason because orcs like to fight. Um, yeah, it, it's it's hard to have like introspective, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's hard. You can. When a giant green foot it. of their god comes and crushes your friend, it's hard to yeah. be like, I wonder if the gods are real. <laughs> it's like, the god just yeah. fucking crushed my mate. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's, it's yeah, I, I just saw the foot of Gork come out the sky and, and, and squash squash people. So yeah. who, who wants to sit here and debate the theology of the existence of Gork? Um, yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's a slightly... Uh, it, it's it's it, I I think you, there there are rooms f for similar styles of, of of thought within Warhammer and Absolutely, and I like the yeah. idea of experimenting with it. I think the introspective stuff will be not impossible. Just, just no, hard no. I, I mean you, you can do anything and anything, but it's yeah, for sure. It, it's one of those things where, as a private game or as a show, you need to sit down with your players and be like, "Yo, so this is the mm. theme," you know, because yeah. otherwise, you know. Mm. Yeah, and a good uh, a good thing I read the other day is that this is from the chap that made the uh, Sims. I was I was listening to a video game design course that he was he was doing, and uh, the the rules of the system help determine the psychology of the player toward what's going on. So there there is an inherent list of expectations in a system that has careers, 
income levels. Yeah. And 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 if you have all of those rules creating all those expectations, then that is automatically say, telling your player in a way what what's going on in that setting. So it's yeah. if you want to do away with some of that, it, it's some of those rules will be antagonistic towards you want to achieve if you want to go really heavily into the the interpersonal relationships etc side of things so yeah. it's it's tricky but but that's where i think vtm was is it, a neat system i would say i still have no idea how the combat works but uh <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have much combat, <laughs> Who knows? Man. yeah um, i don't know i don't think mac was mac, none of my characters were ever involved in any but yeah. it's, uh, it's, i remember oh yeah. uh, well you were you, you got shot at by clicky Oh yeah, yeah. There was that thing. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that was fun. That that was there. Yeah, that's a good time to move that, on to Alec, I guess. You know, that was yeah. Uh, I was just gonna say as we move over to Alec, uh, that was almost like an echo of a Mac moment. You know, where yeah. things just go wrong and get out of hand, and you're like, this is this is verging on on like mm. goofy. But um, I, I like. The, the calm and measured response that after, but I agree, the initial optics of it were like two oh, yeah, bumbling yeah, yeah. No, idiots no, 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 stood it's... there. I think Alec in his mind had more, ah, a problem-solving exercise for two gentlemen. How yeah. shall we proceed? See, um, like, meta-wise, it was very definitely goofy and then, yeah. like, silly and funny. Yeah. But um, when you look at it, like, in character and stuff, it was much more, um, like trying to figure out a way to do it so that they didn't put themselves in much danger yeah, which makes yeah. total sense it's just you know like you've got two people who are supposed to do something that's outside of their wheelhouse for the most part so they're like yeah they're like we've got to do this when we we don't these this these aren't our skill set this isn't our tool set but we still got to do this um i think so, yeah. the th the constant dice rolls being terrible added to a lot of the the, the external appearance of goof because it but was like okay everything you're too. doing is failing yeah, oh, my, yeah mine were bad too so like my and the, the problem yeah. was is like if you guys had opened the door and you know like wandered down though those uh those things would have been a lot more dangerous and the the yeah. hydra in the bottom was like terrifying but yes it, it was one of those things where i'm like i've set it up if if the Hydra was released, it would have been a whole big combat thing. It would have been terrifying. It would have like slooped through the city. Yeah. But but they they planned how they planned, and they they attacked yeah. before these these things happened. I can't with a with a sandbox uh, style, which is my favorite style and my preference. You you can't alter things to suit what you think should happen because it always ends up janky. Where mm -hmm. it where it's like it's like why did that happen and you're like well just fucking just fucking dude, um you're like oh okay so you wanted a boss fight or something you know it's like I had the opportunity there if I if I was a bit more lucky it may have happened, but everything that happened in that whole situation was was great and if I tried yeah. to change it it probably would have been worse, so yeah I just let it play out as it played out uh so. Because I need a drink and very quick toilet. Uh, sure. You intro Alec, and we'll talk about him, him quickly, and then we'll, we'll move okay. on to your stuff. Okay, sure. Intro Alec. Incoming. Hello, everyone. I am Alec. Alexander. I've come here today to talk to you about the head in my basement, I think. Hello, Mark and chat. How are you today? How is you, Captain Defiance, Sir Defiance, I should say? Can we talk to you about the birds? The birds are exceptionally interesting. I enjoy looking after them, more trustworthy than people. Oh. Hello. You're actually doing just... a full on Alec intro. Uh, I, I was just talking to the audience for a bit. Fair we were enough, having a nice enough. little chat. Yeah, we're yeah. having a nice little chat about burbs. <laughs> I mean, so there's intro not... to Alec. Do you mean yeah. uh, an explanation of Cat One's character? Well, uh, I do want to talk about your stuff, and we do need to do the tier list. So, 
we can do. I don't. I don't think we need to go too much into Alec, just purely because, like, we had some thoughts and ideas for him, but it was very much Mac and Marlo are moving on, and it was like mm. me. Me and Hydra kind of sat down, and we were like, you know, do you want to do you want to dip out here, or do you want to kind of carry on for a bit? It was like, let's try. Let's let's make a new character and and see and. Uh, after like thinking over the ideas, I was like, "What about you play a Sabat member who doesn't want to be a fucking Sabat, essentially?" Yeah. Um, which we we both thought was interesting enough, and and hmm. like the... hey, it was a nice challenge. It was a nice contrast for a bit. Yeah, just to play someone down to earth. And... I I did feel I did feel bad as a like GM, just because. It, the way it ended up, I'm super happy with, but there were times when I was like, I feel like I should have just said to Hydra, you know, you can take this week off if you want to. Because, <laughs> like, but this is the yeah. thing is... There was the issue with the pacing of Sunkist and the how long it would take to get the plan done, which I, I guess was like seven to ten sessions or so. Yeah. Um. So, so there was invariably going to be a fairly long period of... um. Uh, difficulty in managing such a split of cast. I think towards um, towards the end, we got a uh, like like we got yeah. a bit more ability to kind of like jump over to Alec and give him his fair. Yeah, shape. yeah. I mean, I, I I appreciate that there were there were logistical issues with <laughs> or, or challenges, I should say. Yeah. But um, no, he was fun to role play and uh, and fun to be and. And it's as, a, as it's a, a cool character. It's a shame we didn't is. manage to, you know, but... Well, in a way, it suits him, because he's a character that his his thing, as it were, is creating an air of mystery around him where there really is... Like, there, there's a history and where he comes from and what he he's done, yeah. but he is quite upfront about himself, and he isn't a very good liar. And, like, what what you see is kind of what you get, but the thing is, is he enjoys trying to make people look for things that aren't there. Uh, or at least he had fun with uh, Cassius trying to do that. But that was also yeah. Meta Hydra just trying to like throw Josh over, like over what clan he was. Well, and, and also like teasing chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget she teasing but chat. <laughs> Alec enjoyed teasing the group regarding it as yeah. well. It's yeah. just sort of. Uh, if anyone ever asks him his clan, he he would just meet it with a question. You know, it's a very uh, yeah. Well, it, it makes sense. You don't really want to band about the Yudsmichi, for sure, for oh. sure. And, and and it works as within his personality <clears throat> as well. It's it's sort yeah. of, uh, you know, vague and poetical answers are acceptable when you're a little posh and eccentric. Yeah, uh, like it's just a little bit of sidebar. I would say, like, spoilers for Sunkist, but this is an exit interview, so if you don't think they're going to be spoilers, like, you know, the hell, dude? Um, but, like, like Alec, we never got the chance to, like, you know, uh, Alec has a lot of possibilities that we kind of talked over and, and everything, but they never kind of solidified. So, yeah. like, the the thing that I'll say about Alec is, like, I'm glad that you stayed on after Marlo to play him because he's a really cool character and there was a lot mm. of like it was a lot of condensed great moments with Alec is what I'll say. Yeah, you know, it was, we didn't it was, see uh, as much of him as we may have liked, but the what we did see was was good. Yeah, he he achieved what I wanted, which yeah. was to a paint a different picture of me that I, you know, don't just have to be memes. Um, although obviously <laughs> Marlo and Mac were more than me, you, you, but, but it you, was all you, you can't resist a little uh, a little oh, flirting like with chat, you know. Like... Oh, for sure, for sure. Like I, it, it it's it, it's a little bit of that and a little bit the players too. Like yeah. I, uh, I I like as a DM talking to my players in that way, even if we're not streaming. It's it's that uh, like that little bit of playful fun uh, for me is just I get I guess it's part of the. The, the the cadence I, that I I enjoy, but but yeah, there there is always there is always a bit of that. I, for a fair bit, I like with Marlo and Mac, I had the chat open a lot more. With with Alec, I I tried to stay out of it a little more. But 
there, there is still it's there in your head knowing that you know this this is how i want the character to look to look to others um and i think with alec there there was a, a pretty strong sense of who he was which i was pretty happy with so that was that was that was cool yeah he 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 I think came across in a fairly short space of time as a fairly neat package of this is who he is and this is what he's like. And I think another GM could take him and be like, yeah, I know how he's going to talk in almost all situations now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, he's got a nice little template to. Yeah, jump they might into. not know his secrets, but his secrets <laughs> don't don't matter so much because any GM can make them his own. Yeah, but it can be, you know, they'll probably have say a one harder, a harder time with uh, Christian. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for that sure. dude's all secrets. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the thought process that he had when borrowing the head was was maybe one day I shall need to look like this person in order to live. So I'm just going to keep this in the basement for the foreseeable. Mm. Um, it, it was partly that and partly sort of tokenistic trophy ish, but uh, kind, of, kind of kind of like um, kind of like a feudal lord taking the head of his enemy for like you know. Yeah, there, there was something yeah. symbolic to him, but it was also a little bit of maybe one day I was planning ahead. Yeah, I saw that. Get out. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. Get out. There, we go. So there you go. No, I, 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 I give Hydra points for that. That was... Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, I, 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 I am tickled. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that, that's Alec, really. There doesn't, yeah. there doesn't need to be much said no. because it's all there. Yeah, and, and like, now we move on to Hydra, not the characters. Hydra stuff. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, you've stuff. got role corruption. Yes, um, that's where that's where the attention is at the moment. Yeah, uh, you do have Essex Hydra as a YouTube yeah, channel. That's kind it's, of like it still your... exists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's like your gaming. Uh... Yeah, I just Ge stream on it when I want to talk to some people. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I, don't, I haven't even done Warhammer stuff on it in such a long time that even game developers that used to contact me with regular releases don't contact me anymore because it's just evident that it's i yeah. it's what something i may go back to if my passion ever goes back to warhammer gaming I mean, so like we're talking computer gaming for Warhammer, yeah, for like, sure like what do you have though because there's um there's uh, uh what's it mm. called uh gladius is kind of cool gladius yeah gladius it, it's cool. kind of like it will get its new content once months because it's a two-man developer team so there's yeah. just not enough to make a youtube channel thrive on that and no. the only good games are the ones that are heavily saturated by meta youtubers like total war and vermintide so which is why i never really covered them because i'm like there's people a better at the game and b more entertaining than me so like I, i'll stick to doing my little corner yeah uh, and i know that they're not the only two variables but but, but no i mean uh, there's blood bowl but it, blood bowl it, is a is a dead end um uh, speaking yeah, from experience <laughs> yeah it, it's it's a thing i still am trying to like i have a chat with one or two of them every now and again and i'm like please package your videos in 20 minutes where you give advice because there's such a need for this rather than posting one and a half hour videos. Hey, I yeah, feel attacked. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, I, 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 still get, I still get comments from people uh, saying like on, on my Blood Bowl tutorial like yeah. guide videos. The the whole point of them was supposed to be an intro for new players uh, just yeah. to like go over basics and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but yeah. One one like very common comment I get still on my dwarf tutorial video is, why are you playing the Skaven and and like tutorializing dwarves? And I'm like, mm. because because the dwarves suck if you don't know how to deal with fast like dodgy yeah. factions. It's fair. <clears throat> and I'm like, this is an example of how not. I basically it's a it's a yeah. previous match I'd recorded. I put it up for the dwarf tutorial and I was like, this is how I kick the ass of a dwarf and what he should have done to stop me. Yeah. And and everyone's complaining. They're like, and I'm, I'm like, oh, the only thing you need to know about dwarves is how to stop passing and running teams. That's it. Yeah. I see my, my problem with Blood Bowl was it's a, it, it looks like a sandbox game yeah. if we're to use this terminology and it's really not. It's, it's, no, no. it's, it, it's, 
down to you should score a certain amount of times with each faction if you want to win. Yeah. Like you shouldn't score, you should hold it on the touchdown line, otherwise you'll lose because the enemy team is XYZ. There's so much scripted stuff like that that yeah. just completely killed the joy the more I looked into it. It's it's also so, um it, it's also like like hey, if you drop the ball as the dwarves in the fir- like in the first couple of turns, quit the game. If yeah. if one yeah, of your players just... if one of your players gets injured and they're like a gutter runner or they're like a big guy, yeah. quit the game. Yeah. Like delete the yeah. team, start again. And for for Blood Bowl 2, where the multiplayer sometimes would take 30 minutes to find a match, that's not fun. Because yeah, I, I'm it's... the like when I was streaming it and when I was when I was recording it, I'm the type of guy who even if I'm like losing to all hell, I will play mm. out the match. Um, so it, it like, like Blood Bowl 2 got me really angry towards the end where I was like, I'm queuing for 30 minutes in a live stream and then mm. I do well and the game lasts two minutes and I do badly and the game lasts an hour and a half. Like it's, it was literally torture. Um, yeah, yeah. I, w- I will say it led to my best, one of my best clips of all time, which was I had, I think three three Bretonians left versus 11 Lizardmen. Mm. It was 1-1 on, like, the last couple of turns, and I blitzed through Croxagors and Sau- and Saurons all yep. the way to a touchdown. Yeah. Like, one, one, pl- one, one like, player. It was a yeah. shit ton of good luck and just so cool. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. No. It's, if the game had more moments like that, but they're obviously the problem is that they're statistically unlikely. Yeah. Therefore, the the uh, but that's the whole thing. I I could so yeah that that Sorry. that whole scenario kind of describes my feels towards Games Workshop video games at the moment, which is yeah. why Roll Corruption is my basically my sole focus. Um, and yeah, it, it's like I I was a fairly forty k person like. Like if I did a if or, or like Warhammer Games Workshop, if I did a Warhammer game on my on my channel, it always did better than you know yeah. something else in the same genre and everything, because people always knew I loved Games Workshop stuff and and 40k and especially. Um, yeah. The problem is, I think uh, we're not talking about you, goddamn. Like we're getting onto a really interesting <laughs> topic. Um, <clears throat> Maybe maybe we I can get you back sometime for the bar brawl and we'll just talk about Games Workshop shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But ba- basically, uh, the core problem with Blood Bowl Two and the core problem with all War Games Workshop games is they don't understand what's appealing about them and they try yeah. and fit them into a genre. So they don't yeah. go, let's make a forty, let's make a forty k game. They go, let's make um, a Company of Heroes type game, but forty k. Let's make a Command and Conquer game, but 40k skin. They like put skin upon an already established style of game. Yeah, I mean that that's better than a lot of the tabletop recycles, though. Yes. In a way, like True. it's still preferable to the majority of like the like the space whole Deathwing top down tile oh, based God. game was like it looked pretty, but it was just like okay, this is the board game, and the board game is fun because it's a board game. Yeah, I mean Blood Bowl Two is that too. And it, well, exactly, and, and it, you take away painting the minis, you take away rolling dice, you take away a lot of this standing around the table with your mate calling calling bollocks to him about yeah. the, the dice rolls, etc. And then you're left with something far more mechanically, like emotionally frustrating, but you've got no way of making that Ooh. fun because the other person's not sat there the other side yeah. of the table laughing at you. The, you know, and it's, it's it, it, just... Yeah, you don't have the social aspect it needs. Yeah, and... it's... The, it doesn't work that well for me. The 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 problem with um the problem with Blood Bowl Two from like a development standpoint as well is when they released Blood Bowl Two, you had a lot of like big YouTubers and Twitch streamers creating leagues, and so they went oh multiplayer yeah yeah so they created like the World Cup and like yeah. put everything into these like competitive competitions when it's a frustrating game that you can kind of cheese um yeah. yeah which meant that everyone got sick of the game and left you know except for the like the yeah. hardcore fans and then yeah. all of the hardcore fans were playing chaos because chaos were better than kill everyone teams. else yeah they're it's, kill teams yeah. 
Um, and so, you know, if you wanted to play like, oh, Skaven are silly, but a lot of fun, or goblins, then all you're doing is being a punching bag for people to murder your teams. Exactly. Um, it's basically yeah, just it's, a it's, step on a it's foot. It's got some, some big issues, and, and that's certainly when probably the biggest. It, it's like the way... Like, there's a lot of ways you could do it, but the way I think that would work the best is taking it more simulation management Yeah. Uh, for yeah. Blood Bowl 2. And you t you get rid of the dice rolls, you get rid of the, like, direct control, and you yeah. turn it into more of, like, a fantasy management. You go into, like, you know... Like, I don't mm. want to say football manager 2019 or whatever but if you go deeper into that kind of vibe it's going yeah. to be much more interesting totally no, like, totally and you can watch the games as if they're you know like you're on the sideline you're a manager yeah i mean that's what the gamer wants really yeah. rather than the the blood bowler it's, it's just something that's more tailored to long-term sustainable fun yeah yeah <laughs> which is yeah, it goes against Warhammer in some ways when yeah. it comes to those tabletops. But but yeah, yeah, that that is but that my is a thing. My my very bad podcast host um uh etiquette aside where I went off on a ma massive rant on my own <laughs> uh, about things that that I'm like annoyed about or want to talk about. Um <laughs> roll corruption. Uh Ro ah, yeah, that thing. Yeah. Uh yeah, so that's that's got the sole focus at the moment. Like it was just kind of to upload some bits and bobs of play sessions but yeah. I, and i've i've had this niggling voice in my ear for forever that like well you're gonna need to do more generic tabletop stuff in order to like if you ever want to go more than 2000 subs realistically because building a a warhammer specifically themed uh role play channel is like you 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 you're pretty much niching yourself into a corner straight away. Yeah. So I I mean so I've like, bitten that bullet for, for for well I mean for for like uh, uh um role play they had the Dark Harris that's was like the gateway to forty k mm. tabletop RPGs yeah uh for a lot of people you know the Total Biscuit playing the Mechanicus was a instant fucking classic you know yeah. um yeah. But, yeah, like, you can't... A really good example of, you know, people really enjoying a 40k tabletop, but it having very little benefit for the per, for the content creator is um, Knorr's uh, Rogue Trader. Yeah. yeah. Knorr's Rogue Trader was great. I myself watched it, and I, I'm still subscribed to Knorr because uh, he does Blood Bowl 2, and I can enjoy it without, you know experiencing yeah. it <laughs> yep 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 um yep. but uh yeah like his, his i think the first episode of his road trader is like over a hundred thousand views or some some shot mm. it's a lot i mean there um, there was a wave back then and and there still is certainly i i i'm perhaps somewhat of a skeptic but if you get a bunch of popular youtubers together it's oh my god they're doing dark heresy let's go watch but but the actual day-to-day -day traffic of let's go find a dark heresy game to watch today or like, to me it's going to be more warhammer fantasy because i i'm just not as into the 40k rule sets yeah, it, yeah. It, it's not something like you, you look at the biggest warhammer fantasy channels out there and and there, there were view spikes like three years ago when it came out but but now it's it's always going to be fairly fairly subdued like like you can build a channel don't get me wrong but yeah. but i think if you want to pull in let's say views via the algorithm rather than by reputation of the people you're playing with because i I'm, I'm basically playing with people, just players that have no they're not content creators they're yeah. just they're just they're just dudes yeah yeah, yeah. uh, uh and, they're, and they're cool dudes I, i'll give them credit um so so like my let's say my advertising will now be in the form of the gm videos i'm i'm putting out which is yeah not necessarily lessons i've they're not there's somewhere between lessons I've learned as GM combined with a way to articulate it that I've learned from dramatic writing courses that Research I'm currently and... doing. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's like, well, a lot of this stuff is so well understood already. If if you're <clears throat> not quite sure what's working with a plot and not what's not quite making sense with a story, 
yeah. then from from the story writing point of view, that like the information's already out there. And and I've seen I and I've seen I've watched so many GM tip videos, but the the problem is is so many of them try to explain it in ways that is from their experience, which is harder to learn from than someone that is teaching it as it is taught. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's I, they both have their merits, both yes, styles. Yes. But I, I'll say, like for myself, a lot of my like experience as a GM is learning from my mistakes. Yeah. And yeah. learning from things where, like you know, I'm like, oh, okay, uh, I didn't. You know, like very early on, I didn't explain what I was doing as GM to my players. Yeah. And so there was like a really weird dichotomy of, of characters who just didn't gel well together. Mm. You know, it, it still yeah. made an entertaining show, but in in the background, yeah. I'm like, oh God, this is really janky. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and like, but also just playing as a player and like being gemmed by other people, I like took ideas from them, took like little, I, I like bit little bits of their style off and took them with me. Yeah. Um, and like sometimes they'd make mistakes and I'd be like, oh, okay, I sh you know, I'll keep that in mind for future games yeah. that I GM. Or yeah. they do something really cool and I'm like, that's, the, you know, like I've, I've bitten little bits of Josh's style off and I take them with me. You know, I'm like, mm. I really like that thing that Josh did um, in Bloodlust. Yeah. I I'm going to take that and I'm going to use that in the future. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like I haven't done any you know like creative writing or storytelling kind of stuff, but I, I think it's a little bit unique for me as well because I um I spent like the majority of my twenties randomly writing short stories and you know mm. and all of this kind of thing. So I just have this huge vault of ideas. And uh, and like little story threads and and through lines and, and plot lines and stuff. So mm. I can just go back to those at any point and be like, oh yes, this idea. And then yeah, the the thing that I I've taken away from it is 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 I can I can kind of impart some information for things I can't quite execute perfectly yet. But yeah. it's it it's also it it's nice to have language for certain things because uh, if you lack the language it makes it harder to express what you've done uh, like and, lost in and to comprehend it exactly yeah. you you can you can confuse yourself with translation like the oh, yeah, like yeah. The, the next video i'm going to do will be discussing um mechanical plot versus uh, organic plot and sandbox versus railroad and the various uh, meanings of all of those words that's, which uh, are misused yeah that, that's um, obviously a video about the Adeptus Mechanicus. No, organic, indeed. Organic indeed. Or mechanic, mechanical. Indeed. Obviously mechanical is better. But if you have a glossary <laughs> of terms, you can kind of say, okay, now, you know, if you have that glossary, you can look at a problem and take your glossary and the glossary will be in the back of your head being like, this is what this thing is, this is what this thing is. And you'll recognize that maybe you didn't put enough organic plot points in or you didn't put enough... Or you put too many mechanical plot points in, etc., and and it, it makes it easier for for light bulbs to go off. I think if you've yeah. got um, a little bit of like a mechanical knowledge to it, and that there's definitely so much stuff GM wise that you learn from experience that you can't really explain that easily. But for some of the bits, like game design and uh, storytelling, what makes good stories versus what makes bad stories, that that it is already understood very well in and and in so many books and it, it can be really hard to discover that yourself yeah. you can totally do it don't get me wrong and if you've read enough books you you probably have like a deep deeper understanding but for me it was mm. like okay well let's figure out the people that are deep, what the people are saying about writing books now i can like just shortcut to at least a, a basic understanding and it, it that's really helped to, to try and it's made me look back at my old stuff and realize what i did wrong and why it was wrong and what the result of it was so that so that's yeah. been really therapeutic for me yeah to, um, and reflect. like your 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 tip videos and and you know like tutorials almost i i don't know what to yeah. kind of you call you, you you would call them but uh, yeah, like guides gm guides almost i guess kind of yeah um, 
<laughs> kind it, of. It, it's, it's like, for, for me, I've considered doing, like, how to sheepify things, you know? But yeah. for me, so much of it is instinctual and, like, just runs on what I think works. And luckily for me, they tend to work. Yeah. Uh, for, like, the viewers and everything. Uh, additionally, onto that, it's like, it, it depends what what you're GMing and how and, you know, like, why and, and the... Because mm. a lot of my... A lot of what I would say is how to be a show GM. How, yeah. to, how to, like, GM a show so it's entertaining and you don't let the rules bog down the entertainment and fun. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think many people would come to that video... Like, or, or they would because they enjoy the shows that I run, but then they try it and they're like, this isn't fun for a private game. And I'm like, I know. I've tried, to, I've run mm. private games a couple of times and it's a weird experience for me because I, I, I don't drive with it. Like, you know, yeah. when, when, when I make like a, a Clay Frasier type character, um, or or I make I make like a I make like a Nathan Fortuna type character, and then I present them to a private game, and the private game people are all talking in third person. Mm. So so yeah. it's like it's like hello travelers and welcome to my weird yeah. wonderful shop of wonderment, and they're like, uh, I say to the I say to the um I say to the shopkeeper that I'd like this 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 and this, and I'm like, yeah okay he he he, he gives it to you. <laughs> yeah yeah you've got to uh yeah that, that's 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 a future video uh, mechanical players versus organic players but like, I, you, that, that's how i view it uh, you, you there's just, different ways to describe it yeah yeah and it's all perfectly valid you just have to oh it is as, as gm it's not your job to force players into playing a style it's your job to vibe with your players yeah so if your players it's... want things a certain way you have to adapt to that they don't have to to adapt to you to a point yeah i i think many a gm has probably killed their own interest in gming though as a result of trying to do something they don't enjoy yeah like if you're i'm i would say i'm way more interested in uh organic gming rather than mechanical yeah so if i were to run a D D style session of here is your quest, go kill monsters. And and the players just did nothing that surprised me. Mm. I, I'd do that for a couple of sessions for social reasons, but I, I'd have no interest in running that long term. Yeah, no, no. Uh, mm. and, and, but the, the, the problem is, is at the, at the same point that there simply are players that have view it differently to you. And, and that's a difficult thing to come to terms with is that different people think differently. Um, so I've got a, I've got a couple of ways to try and explain that with, um, some, some basically basic psychology parameters but you can't change someone from a mechanical player to a to like you can maybe try and tease them into it but chances are how they view the the game is actually how they view the world yeah and you you can't change that no. really like you can sometimes make a light bulb go off if they hadn't just realized it and they or, were that type of person or if they were in a group of people who played a certain way and they yeah, just didn't exactly. realize that or they didn't have the confidence to kind of like step out and be like okay i'm you know doing this but, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly but you you can put up pick up pretty quick when you say to someone like hey what do you want to do and if they're if they're like okay well what's what's my quest then you, you, there, there are some very clear ways to, yeah. <laughs> to tell, really. And I, but, I, but there's I think... nothing wrong with either. No, it's just like I have a preference and a bias towards one, but but mechanical players will have fun in a different type of game, yeah, and mechanical yeah. GMs as well. And I, I, I think like it, even the even the system you play is uh, slightly indicative of how your show or your show or your game's going to go. Yeah, because like. Like to take the the famous one to take critical role, like people are there for their role play, for their characters, for their voices, for their talent, etc. Um, but because it's D and D, they still end up with like, you know, they do their best with what they can for the fight scenes, yeah. but they'll do like two episode fight scenes, and it's yeah. like, it's they have the game to is about killing it, monsters. Yeah, because that's the game. So it's like, yeah. It, it does limit them in a lot of ways that something like VTM doesn't. Yeah. But it's less limiting in other ways because, 
you know, like it, D and D can appeal to everyone. It, it, it very yeah. much is like the banner, banner, like system. Mm, it is. It's it gateway really gateway is. drug for a lot of people. Um, the only problem I have with it is like, it, it's one of those things where it's the gateway drug that a lot of people don't actually step through the gateway. They're like, I know D and D. I'm I'm comfortable in 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 my little chair here, my my D and D chair. And I'm like, there's so yeah. many cool systems out there. Like, check them yeah, out. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm good. I, I, I'll, I'll sit and watch Critical Role and a couple, couple yep. of other like D and D shows, but which well, is fine. But uh, uh, there's there's a bit of a market to because there there, there definitely is a niche little bit of D D and D players who are, who have played it for long enough that they've got bored, and and those are ones that I I hope to pinch. Yeah. So. That's that's what what I'm hoping for, and probably if I get a thousand views, one of those or two of those will be someone that's like, yeah, this Warhammer thing seems interesting that he's doing. Let's have a watch. But mm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's it's all a drip, you know. Like slowly, yeah. people find new things, and one day, someone who only watches Critical Role will be like, oh. I feel like I should watch a, a, a VTM show, and then they watch, you know, like roll for a yeah, VTM then it's or, there. or whatever, it's there. and then they start branching out, and it's mm. all, it's all good. Like my my thoughts my thoughts on this are, are very slightly negative, but with like a positive overall thought on it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best way to... I, as of the nineteenth as well on Monday, I'll be running the same show twice a week, which will be like. That's Madness, gonna be interesting for you, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my prep at the mo is ninety percent of it is is creating tokens and other such things because it's generally a case of asking the players what do you want to do, and there's yeah. normally three or four scenes in there. So I make the maps for it. I uh, I will go back to improving more. Yeah. Um. And and that that will be fine because I I I've generally not planned more than the next session anyway, and. I, I've been doing a different, I would say, style of GMing, which is more creating stuff in the direction the players are going. So I've got the yeah. whole of Reich, Reichland to play with, which is big. Fun. <laughs> so it's like, okay, they 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 tell me that they think this is happening over here. It's one of their suspicions, so they're going to go investigate and don't tell them this. But the like the proportion of effort they put in is normally, you know, that will correlate to to how much they find um as obviously it has to make sense within the setting and the verisimilitude and and, and th there are situations where stuff is withheld until it's appropriate but but it's very much uh like procedural generation yeah it, it's yeah. just and and that that's been actually quite easy to do it much easier than i thought it would be um even with like the first plot being at like a zinchian grand plan like i mm. i didn't even know what he was doing until like the eighth session out of 13 but i had given clues as to what it was to a point where at the end i could reveal what it was sense yeah uh if they looked into it and and I, I i don't know how to articulate that yet but that type of creation is is easier than people give it credit for um provided you're not overly specific with details along the way well yeah i i mean it's it's interesting because my I'm I'm very much a uh, an improv GM in a lot of ways, mm. but I'm also a sandbox GM, which makes it interesting because I do a shit ton of like over prep, where yeah. a lot of the stuff I prep doesn't get used in the campaign because yeah it, it's it's open to where the players want to go with it, and then like. I I do a I do like over prep and then improv when I need to, mm. uh. But for the most part, it's just kind of like it, all my work is done, so I don't have to do too much in between. I just have to like think of where the players are probably going to go and prepare for that, and and be like, okay, so so you know, uh, Mac wants to or Marlo wants to do X so it's going to involve these characters what are these characters doing and you know like yeah it, it's it's interesting and it's weird but uh I don't mm. think I could make a lin I don't think I could make a long linear show anymore like I I think yeah. that I just wouldn't enjoy it so. yeah 
Yeah, I, it's the, the, this something that I'll. I'm gonna. Tr I've got half a video kind of there to 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 go into more of the 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 feels of that, but um, uh, an improv setting that is created as you go organically in relation to what the players do can still have that like total freedom of what they want to do and where they want to go and 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 basically you you can like build a sandbox as they explore things yeah uh it's it's just like let's think of it as another way to generate a sandbox it's it's not that they're um it's not that you build the sandbox and they play in it it's that they build the sandbox by exploring uh, it depends what like if they're just heading from a to b then they're making much of a sandbox because yeah. you know they're, they're just making a trail of events uh but if you have them in a city you i, I think it's still possible to do and, and perhaps less uh imposing for some gms but but others will have much more fun in visualizing a world beforehand and then letting them play within that yeah so so there's it, it's just to throw a different take on what can be done oh yeah definitely um but um, yeah, I, I'm finding all of that mental gymnastics immensely interesting at the moment, mm, just to try and mm. be like, okay, what what are my options here as a GM, and what what can I do, and 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 uh, how can this work? And I have I have this idea that I I talked through in one of the tip videos that I'm I'm determined to do a little six session horror in in an isolated just two buildings in the middle of winter. You're stuck there for the basically until the snow starts to lift, till the mm. storm goes, mm. and just have like a six session campaign of horror there. Um, like a, uh, call it a suspense thriller. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I reckon that would be fine. I, I've got a few thoughts and plans on, on why I'm a fancy. Mm. I, I, I still maintain in my brain uh, that I am going to uh, kind of custom build a Necromunda system. And play yeah. a Necrom Necromunda campaign. Yep. Um, <laughs> I started to do that twice, both times, been like, mm, uh, yeah, it's, it's so it's, much work. It's a rough one. It's a rough one. But, um, like, this is the thing is, it's only become more apparent in my brain after the two most recent, well, the one most recent Necromunda game and the upcoming yeah. one, where I'm yeah. like, I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, uh, a Necromunda game. This should be really good. Oh, it isn't? Okay. Um, the next yeah. one is that going to be good? It's just Doom. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's like you know it's the tr it's the traditional Games Workshop letdown mm. of either they go too tabletop and it kind of sucks, yeah. or they go to they just like put forty k over something yeah. popular. Um, yeah. And you're just it's... like, oh, okay, well there you go. I I feel like Necromunda could be the, the the VTM of the TTRPGs, and that it's so easy to see it as a as such a complex sandbox location for someone yeah. to explore. Like there is, yeah. if you set it in the Hive City or the Lower Hive, even it doesn't have to necessarily be in, and, and any under Hive can be different. So yeah. it's like okay, your un, your under Hive can be. Uh, the, the the same as the pit, or they could be two separate locations. But but you have all these careers and jobs that are being done as well. You've got different factions. You've got in loads of different industries that are doing stuff. So it's like yeah, I mean, you've you got, can have you got rat anything. skins. You've got the orlocks, the eshers, the spire lords. Yeah, um, you've got no shortage of, uh, of factions in that sense. But you've also got all of the the and, yeah. uh, the, the industrial ones. So so like the not necessarily the, the gangs that the gangs or the houses but yeah. you've got the you've got the six houses but you've also got like the the merchant houses sorry is what i wanted to say yeah. and you've got loads of that to, like there's just so much there and then you've got the imperial infrastructure that you can put in if you want you know it's like yeah you've got some yeah, cool stuff there you could do a very i i would say vtm-ish style where the house the kindred that are controlling things but a lot yeah. of people don't really know it uh or, or in some cases they might know it it's just like yeah that's our overlord and don't say anything uh <laughs> everyone burnt, so, all the important people burn to death and there's crazy. yeah i mean <laughs> you could play it so many ways and the nice yeah. thing is that there's just enough canon written about necromunda where you've got all of the tools as a gm to build the setting yeah but not too much of the dogma yes. to, to hold you back yes, so i so. really like that 
that it is it, it it doesn't follow down the whole trope for 40k too much which is nice yeah it, it um, separates itself from 40k which is good yeah. of say of like this is one of a, a hundred thousand hive cities so the, the other option this one the other option of course being gorkamorka which i was so tempted to do cubans in a Gorkamorka setting trying to survive for a while. I, I mean... It would have been hard. Just, like, for, for me, all I do is rip stuff from Only War and turn yeah. it into um, Gorkamorka. Uh, yeah. you, you play as orcs and you, you, you just... Uh, it wouldn't be a long campaign because you, yeah. you can't yeah, long yeah, campaign yeah. orcs, but um, yeah. it would be a lot Agreed. of fun. Agreed. I, I, yeah. I, I have ideas for that, which, which we may get into in the future. I don't know. Um, so... Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about on your end of things you're doing? Uh, like plans uh, for the future or, or things you're you're going to be getting into or, or are doing currently? I, I have a few, like, things in my brain that I'm like, okay, if, yeah, that, if, that if might like work. Yeah, if they're, like, secret. You know, I, I'm going to do a few, like, actual examples of GMing, which I, I might do one or two like of the gm thought process so what i'm thinking of doing is having a player sat there in a chair with me and, and go through like okay let's run this horror situation but every time you want to make a decision we'll just toss a coin quickly and move on yeah each scene will be summarized by a sentence and every now and again i'll pause and say okay this this is a situation where we're going to trigger the dramatic event yeah and in this situation this is what it's going to be yeah. and here here is my sentence explaining and then the player is going to say okay well i want to do this so i i have in mind the plans to do that a few times so i can narrate the gm thought process alongside mm, it mm. which i think would be interesting for new gms to be like like oh where has he come up with all of this and a lot of the time it's just really simple like well i've established this character is angry and my protagonist has just done something yeah my protagonist just punched him there is already, <laughs> so, there's already so, a few yeah, ways these could it, this could you know, kind of progress yeah exactly well, i just want to do something like that to break the wall a little bit and go through the full process of a couple mini campaigns that would be like six sessions long which would have yeah. effectively be like 30 or 40 scenes and then just do them each in a sentence and describe in between each one what i'm doing and why yeah i i think that would be like a, a nice mental exercise so that's, that's something i'm planning for the future but i need to see how it goes and it will be a really good opportunity for me to see if i can actually um articulate it in a way that makes sense to the viewer as well uh, yeah but that's where my glossary will come in handy <laughs> we'll see but yeah that's all uh are, are we okay for time yeah yeah like we're good. okay cool cool i didn't um, know if there were constraints on uh brawling well i mean now is the point where we move over to here yep um, I may need to adjust the size of this window okay. very slightly. But, There's uh, probably a, a hell of a lot of factions, or is that is that we're not doing sub factions? No, I would no, assume no. surely we, that we that would be the, hell. Hey, does that go? Sub factions, so much. That that so, that that should be. I think that's sufficient. I can see an S. Yeah. Um. See. Okay, so we'll have a sabbacata. The worst. And we'll, we'll work from there. So, mm, okay. we start off with chaos at the worst. Will they stay there? Who knows? Uh, so, beastmen specifically, I think. Uh, are, we to, are, we, are we doing? Because that, that's beastmen. Is, oh, yeah, that's chaos. There we go. Uh, so, this is the beastmen, who um, actually yeah. I have interesting thoughts about, but uh, this isn't about me. Okay. I'll try my best not to make it about me. <laughs> so, beastmen, I, th I find very... I, so the way we tear this is yeah. now I pick up the Bretonians and I say okay. to you, hey Hydra, are they worse or better than the Beastmen? They are... Mm. Yeah. Slightly I'm worse. Them, I'm going to have them up the top like this. Slightly worse and I'll, I'll give you a... My reasoning for it is that the Beastmen are so essential to how every other race in Warhammer kind of behaves. They're, they're, they're there as the consequence of magic. At least that's like the, the rumors around them. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's because of their interaction with humans that makes it, for me, for them to be so important for 40K, whereas Bretonians are honestly just French, French humans yeah. instead of German yeah. humans. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that is, it's just, let's, let's throw in another human culture into it. I don't, I don't think it adds anything particularly more to the grand scheme of things. So, I mean, just call me anti-French if you will, but that, that's, I just, yeah, they, they don't, I don't see them as having the same impact on the setting. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, and like, I could see the Bretonians being the worst. It is kind of a meme, especially in, in the tabletop, like Bretonia just sucks. Yeah. Uh, and in yeah. Blood Bowl 2 as well, um, so. Uh, yeah. Dwarves, who I feel, I'm, I have interesting thoughts on dwarves. I think, canonically, they're, like, essential. Yes. They're, they're like, they're just mandatory that they have to be there. And and I like the Warhammer portrayal of them as well. Like, it, it, it's, it's very similar to, to Tolkien-ish, but with slightly less comedy, although that's maybe the director's fault, not Tolkien. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would put them above Beastman. Uh, above Bretonian and Beastman, okay. okay. Yes, yeah, I would put them above both. Uh, um, I have a, f like, my feelings on the, the Warhammer Dwarves is the presentation of them is so bland. Yeah. Um, they're, they're just kind of like, just, I don't know, like, they can't be squatted. Because yeah. they're, as you said, they're like integral to Warhammer Fantasy. But I, th I feel like people look at dwarves and they're like, eh, <laughs> you know, like they're they're short and they got big armor and they're strong. But like, unless you go deeper into the lore, which let's face it, most people don't. Um, yeah, you have, you well, have to, it's like the dwarves. You have to dig for quite a long time to get anything of value from dwarves. It's the yeah, the 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 issue I think that they would have with that is that the because they're basically based on uh, like a a working class grumbly bloke from Yorkshire. Yeah, um, incredibly proud of what they do, industrious, but you know, grudging uh, and and stubborn. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone from Yorkshire is like this. I'm just saying no, it's, 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 it's a, a stereotype. stereotype. It's, it's, and it's, I will you know, also. Where, I will also say, I think my dislike for Warhammer Dwarves is because I love what Terry Pratchett did with his dwarves. Mm. There's so much character in the dwarf race in the Discworld that yeah. it kind of makes me look at these dwarves and be like, uh, like, you know. So I, what I would say is I think tabletop-wise, I would put them as probably level with Beastmen yeah. because I... Because I think that looking at the army, they are bland. And I'm thinking of this perhaps a little more from the role play side, where I feel that the that there is perhaps a richness, but I could see the argument for them them being as integral as beastmen on the same sort of level. Yeah. So I I could be convinced to keep them the same, although just a I little bit above beastmen, I guess. I would put them above sense, beastmen, yeah. but they're in the same category. Okay of essential to the world I, I i would actually say yeah essential to the world but not necessarily better constructed to the beastmen they're just needed uh we'll, we'll go through a few of the i'm gonna say easier ones in my easier mind easier ones okay uh, which is the lizard men uh better or worse than bretonia i would say mm. ever so slightly above but not. definitely below the other two oh, okay okay i i, I I'm, I'm jumping the gun there but i yeah probably these guys would be next which is uh kislev kislev level with bretonia like i love the character i think it's cool yeah but i don't think it's it, it it's the like I think all of these kind of fall under what you just gonna rank the empire and they're all just yeah. like aspects so uh, better like better or worse than them because currently Bretonia is still at, I'd put them level the with Bretonia okay but you have to do better or worse <laughs> oh okay um better than Bretonia okay yeah better than yeah. better than Bretonia not by much maybe but uh... very by a hair. <laughs> 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 
who, who, by a hair. Who's this? Is this... Uh, Tilia. Tilia, yeah. Or Astalia. Um, I always get the flags confused. Did you just want to put like that? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, they're the same as Kislev for me. Better than Bretonia. Better than Bretonia. I, have, I think they have slightly better character. Yeah. But it's only because I think the... Like, it's interesting. I, I don't think it... I do like the whole peasant aspect of Bretonia, but it it's like yeah. it's such a it's such a one note thing. Whereby yeah. whereby even like like these two, uh Kislev and and whatever these guys are called. Um yeah. just in general, they have a better vibe, like a more interesting um character to yeah. them. Whereas Bretonia is like, we have the Lady of the Lake. It's like, yeah, that's cool. Okay. So um, it's where I, I don't think Bretonia stand out as much from yeah. Reichland because Reichland has loads of knights and they yeah. look like, I know they don't look exactly the same as the knights errant, etc. but they also have poor people that look like peasants. Yeah. It, it's it, like, just let's, mm. let's be true and honest. Uh, Bretonia was an attempt by the English vis-a-vis -vis, um, Games Workshop to invade France and get French people yeah. playing. <laughs> playing I, 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 I get that. Yeah, I get that. Kemri above Bretonia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because they're cool. Yeah. Um. We're, we're very quickly getting into the cool factions, in my opinion. But uh... yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. They're they're above for me. Like I, I don't think canonically there is the the vampire counts would be more important in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But but they're at least an interesting flavor of undead so uh, let's let's put them up at with the lizard men more yeah. or less interesting than lizard men oh okay um i would say they've got some some connectivity there don't they they're, they're sim similar i'm gonna yeah. put them above just for personal preference that's fair like, that's fair I find the Egyptian vibe as more aesthetically pleasing. Yes. But then dinosaurs are kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it, it, the one thing that sells me on Kemri is the minis. I really like the old minis. Yeah. Like a, a big legion of organized undead. Uh, slightly above, but slightly I really don't think there's Beastman. much in it. It's, uh, below Beastman. Below Beastman, okay. Yeah, Beastman. Beastman. Uh, Beastman. The Beastman are coming. <laughs> the Beastman are here. It's the sound uh, of the police. Yeah, the they're, the beastmen are too integral to the setting, really. To... And I will also say, beastmen have a certain personality. The, yeah. Like the problem I and I'm just saying this now because you've placed them. Uh, the problem I have with the the Camry, the the Tomb Lords, is um the only thing that has personality in their faction is their leaders, and that's not yes. much of a personality even still. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh, when it was just undead, I would put the just undead higher because they have this really like classic gothic um, necromancy vibe, yeah, which fit really well. Which is now basically what the vampire counts is, but they yeah. had the added addition of having Nagash, and yeah. Nagash is yeah. just a fucking Chad. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I accept criticism of Kemri and would say I've put it slightly higher because it's more aesthetically pleasing personal thing for yeah, me yeah, yeah. Um, um what are we on next high elves high elves filthy high elves better than bretonia better than bretonia i don't like high elves i'll say that now Ty but Tylea, I, I have Kislev. to respect them better than the humans okay. uh and better than lizard men better than lizards better than camry <sighs> like yeah better than beastmen like no. Okay. Well. Oh, are we? Ooh. I, so, so my reasoning for this is like I feel like the trio of human dwarfs elves is just at the core of everything here. Yeah, yeah. It, it is like from them everything else spawns. I, I just for me they're like the. I I, don't, I think that's Tolkien rubbing off a little bit. Um, I think I have to put them. Lightly about I have to put them above Beastman, which hurts me. But yeah, I think I do. I I just see them as integral, despite the fact I don't like them. Well, uh, I I will say, uh, are they higher than dwarves or lower than dwarves? Lower than dwarves. Okay. Um, I I will say again now that you've placed them, like 
they've got a really cool it's it's a very eldar aesthetic like very shiny yeah. very smooth um and I, I like it i also like that they're very clearly like arrogant assholes which comes yeah. across in fantasy sometimes but not to the extent as it does in warhammer yeah uh, where it's like yeah like most of the elves in any form are assholes in some way um yeah. Which is, which is nice because uh, very often it's like it is. Legolas is such a great person. It's like no, he's a cunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's a kill stealer for a start. And elves and dwarves are two different things that can go wrong if you have too much of a certain trait as a human, and that's why they're both equal in some ways, as they're both the extremes of the the dwarfs are stubbornness, loyalty, and and those virtues, and the elves are excessive order and d sort of detachment from uh morality and more of a focus on organization so and, and both are both are two different things that can go wrong with humanity if they went in different directions so i so i see them as both being equal in that sense but dwarfs are cooler <laughs> in my mind i'd rather yeah. role play a dwarf than yeah. an elf i mean i'm a, I, I'm a dwarf fortress player so i kind of yeah. default to dwarves over elves in general but yeah, I I just feel like elves are so much harder to get right. Like if I if I had a group of players right now that said we want to have a dwarf campaign, I'd be like, yeah, I'm down. If they said we want to have an elf campaign, I'd be I'm out. You know, like yeah. I I don't want to have five people role playing elves. It would kill me inside. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dark elves could be. I mean, dark that, elves. Yes, that's too but, hot for TV, but it could be interesting. Yeah, that's that's sort of like. Um vampire-ish so that's 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 okay uh so let's go with uh wait so who is this norska that's norska okay yeah i i think um for me at least uh they're not really a traditional faction in my head they're just like chaos aligned they're chaos northern barbarians me. kind yeah. of it's i i would put them I, I would probably put them last, even though I would, I don't want Bretonia to be... Com I don't want to be unfair to Bretonia, and I think they add slightly more than Norska do. Yeah. Because, I like, Chaos have Chaos Marauders anyway. Yeah. So these it's... are just Chaos Marauders that are used to colder weather with some... They have some cool units. I, I will give that... Okay, they're above Bretonia. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> they have a few more flavoursome units like mammoths and yeah. and stuff that they bring to the table. But but like Bretonia do have some stuff too. They have mm, trebuchets and yeah. but uh, that that's that's just Games Workshop being like, we've got to give them something. <laughs> they have to have something interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm happy with this ish. Okay. Uh but not higher than like Tylea and No, and... keep them where they are. Okay. Yeah, they can they can stay there. There. Um, let's move on to the proper. Uh, well, actually, let's do these guys first. The vampires of the coast, because yeah, vampires like, of the coast. I kind of mm. want to have a separate thing for these, like these three and and these guys, because I just yeah, feel like yeah. they're you know, it's just it's just pirate vampires, you know. Yeah, exactly. Do, do you just want to like, put them like like we'll have this tier just basically be all the the sidebar factions. Sure, sure. Yeah, um, it's just. They're basically like DLC expansions yeah, of yeah, the main yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And, and then we got these ones who are the more serious yeah, ones. No, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah. So basically, this is so this is no longer the worst. This yeah. is um, with, a, with a twist. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like exactly. hello, I'd like, I'd, like, um, I'd like the Empire faction, but with a twist. Like a twist yeah, of lemon exactly. piece. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so uh, we'll we'll play off uh, we'll play off for all of these factions. I assume they're probably higher than all of these. The twists, yeah. So we'll start at Lizardmen, yeah. who are basically yeah. the lowest, and we yeah. will go with the Wood Elves. Wood Elves are. See, part of me wants to say they're the most they're, annoying faction yeah yeah but they're they're almost a with a twist faction but not quite because mm. they do have the nature thing going for like i i'm gonna can i can i move kemri down one uh yeah yeah, yeah. i i, you, I, you I like feel the more kemri have to be with a twist I, uh, 
I mean, they're they're not though. They're kind they, of they not. No, I know that they they, they yeah. do have their own thing. They're kind of like wood elves, so they're very similar there. So we're in the right place here, in that it it is different and it does have a thing. Wood elves have to be above Kemri, I think. Yeah. Okay. That because they have at least more like they've, more they've, they've got things that make them unique. Yeah. But yeah, wood elves are very very. So Kemri are very distinguished too, but wood elves are very. Wood elves will it, literally go fuck up humans for no reason otherwise other than yeah. like you hurt a tree. And that's that's always funny to me because you know, again, classic fantasy, wood elves are supposed to be like, oh friends, please don't hurt trees, we'll help you instead. And these yeah. wood elves are like, fuck you, bitch. You burned a tree slightly. We're going to destroy mm. your entire city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's true. Which is always I fun. would I would say for the Wither Twist, I would put the pirates at the top of Wither Twist yes, if we were to fair. rank them, because pirate vampires are, oh, cool. uh, yes. are cooler than men with bears. Yes. Um we can or, maybe or, order you know, them at the end. There's a, there's an argument for men with bears, but uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. My, you have an attack dog? Check this out. <laughs> oh yeah. Attack bear. Uh, uh, so what are men? we going for next? Wood elves, lizard men, wood elves. Mm, I would probably keep it where it is. Okay. okay. I. So w- lizard men are like nature order, whereas uh, like orcs are kind of like p- pure chaos. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's almost like nature chaos, but not quite. I mean, they are made of mushrooms, but I don't... Well, quite... um, so, I, I, I would say uh, lizard men are, like, new, uh, like lawful neutral. Yeah, lawful whereas, neutral is the way of putting it. Whereas wood elves are, like, are like almost lawful evil in a weird yeah. way. You know, like, yeah, like yeah, just because they're... they killed pro- humans for a long time. Just because they're, like, pro- just because they're pro-nature doesn't mean they're nice about it, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're big douchebags. Um... I, I think lizard men are slightly more. They're not as beneficial to the setting in some ways, but yeah. I think they have a stronger place in the world. Yeah, a- and I can agree with that. It's That's, really like close. Yeah, yeah, really close. Okay, uh, let's us go for chaos. Uh, chaos have to be above Camry. Yep. Above wood elves. Yep. Above lizard men. Yep. I. It's kind of hard to not have them above beastmen, just because they're. They've got to be above beastmen. Yeah. yeah. And Fire I elves? would say. Yep. Okay. I'm not massive on chaos, Me but neither, I would. But. I, but I feel like their presence is. It couldn't be Warhammer without them. I mean, I think it could, right? But. They are almost a lot of the time, aside from some of my favorite little boys, uh, like the big bad, you know, threat to yeah. Violence. It's it's like they tie into everything. Like the the, I, I would say that I may be thinking. Okay, so very quickly, I'm going to mm. say higher or lower than dwarves, and I'm going to give my opinion very quickly on chaos because I have thoughts on why I'm a chaos. I would say higher. Ooh. Interesting. I, I'd agree with that, I would say. But um my my take on on chaos, uh you can tell that I've left the interesting factions to the end, can't you? Um yeah. my my take on chaos in Warhammer is it has a a fatal flaw to be interesting, in that as much as I hate space marines, chaos space marines gave chaos flavor. Yep. Like, there is so much flavor in the Chaos Space Marine factions, all the different chapters and all of their, like, backstories and lore. You yeah. don't have that in Warhammer. Like, you have Zinch, you have um, Slanesh, you have Korn, you have Nurgle, and they mm. still have their characteristics, but they are just formless demons who ramp around and then, you know, like, disappear mm. because they're Chaos. Like, like... And and that's uh, we'll we'll get into um the my favorite little boys later, but I think that's why the Skaven became like the big bad because they're more interesting. Right. Okay. Um. So I, I I see the view. Um, let's go to uh the good guys, the Empire. Yeah. Uh. Carl Franz. 
better better than we we can skip to put putting them. Ah, oh, but then you then you don't get the like. Ooh, okay. Are they be better are than they Kenry? Better than, be better than elves. Yeah. Better than elves. lizard men. Okay. Uh, better than beastmen. Some interesting fights between the beastmen and, and empire. Mm, I think they're I think they're better than elves. Yeah. Yeah. And and better than dwarfs. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because without humans, they I don't think you could make the point that there can be orcs. It's kind of like uh. I, that's the way I see dwarfs. Is dwarfs are a what if of humans? Yeah. yeah. So if you if there is no human, I mean, then same with the have elves. no place being there. Same with the elves, yeah. exactly. And like the halflings. Uh, and... I I think they're above chaos too in some ways. Yes. But very very close. Close. I, so because I I, I yeah. have I I have a, a take on on the empire as well. Uh, and all of the like subhuman, uh, you know, the human like sub factions, mm. which is. If humans didn't exist in Warhammer, playing any of the other races would not be as interesting. There, yeah. is, there is something. It, 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 it like when you are playing as chaos demons uh, in tabletop or Warhammer, or, uh, Total War Warhammer, wherever. When you fight against the humans, you get the feeling of being, you know, of actually being your faction. You know, when you're. When you're chaos demons ripping through helpless humans, you feel like a badass chaos demon, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. If you didn't have humans, you wouldn't get that feeling because there's no, like... You can't put yourself in the place of, a, of, of like, an orc or a, or a vampire or, or a skeleton, you know? I think it, it's like humans are the protagonist, and if you didn't have them and you played an antagonist, it, it, it just doesn't have the same... Yeah. It doesn't hit you the same way, so I completely it would, agree. It would, it would be it'd be like it'd be like Sunkissed and all the players are like Kalig and Lamia and you know, like there's yeah. no it's... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... just not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. For uh, sure. Right. I'm with you there. Vampire counts. Um just above above Kemri. Oh, yeah. Above Wood Elves. Yep. Lizard I men? would say they're either going to be stuck where they are or above lizard men, but it's, probably no further. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if you go just by their main characters, they're really mm. interesting, but they get yeah. dragged down by their army because they're super bland. It's a lot yes. like undead. Yeah. Well, I feel like they're they're a, they're a side villain that shows. Uh, like an an aspect of what's there, but okay, I I would say above lizard men. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, above lizard men, and I'm I'm curious about. I think beastmen are more integral than vampires are. Sure. Um, they're they're they're. Just are they more sort of... interesting? Like mm. like if if you had a choice to talk about them, or if you had a choice to like play and not like choose an army. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so here's, uh, it boils down to the hero units within the vampires are the interesting bit, whereas yeah. beastmen are all interesting to, yeah, to they, a lesser degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is it's, it's a case of how much do you like the the person in charge of the army, the face, <laughs> face of evil yeah. rather than evil itself. Or, or uh, you know, if you just vibe with a, like, undead horde, you know, like... I like vibe with undead more than beastmen in terms and... of, like, if I had to buy an army right now, I'd much rather be vampires. Yeah. So I, I will stick them above, but okay. I, okay. I would accept the argument canonically that uh, beastmen are more integral to the setting. Oh, yeah, that's but... fine. This is all personal preference, so yeah. you, know, you don't need to be like, these guys are more important to the story or to the setting. I, I, I'm trying to do a little bit of both in yeah, my head, yeah, yeah. so it's like, not like if this was a question of what would I rather collect on tabletop, it'd be very different. Oh, yeah, this is just the... what, what what do you prefer overall for whatever reason? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm bouncing within a few reasons in my head, but, but they're there somewhere. I'm uh, trying to else? explain... Higher, uh, which ones are these? What? Uh, uh, vampire counts versus high elves. Oh, uh, lower than elves. Okay. I prefer them to elves, but I think elves are more important that the setting has them. Hey, you know, if if you want to put elves in your currently top five, that's fine with me. <sighs> okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. It's not to say. 
I prefer them because if they didn't exist, Warhammer wouldn't be the same with them. Yeah. But I would, I would love to kill them with any army. So are you putting Vampire Counts above High Elves? or No, Vamps can oh. stay where they are. Okay, okay. The fact that I like killing them is why I like why they're there. <laughs> that's fair, it's, that's fair. It's like they're the race that everyone loves to slaughter because yeah. they're just or, or the so Empire. hateable. Yeah, and the Empire too. Yeah. Yeah. The elves the killing Empire. the elves is for a different reason. Yeah. It's more like satisfying Spe- cathartic. Speaking of killing the high elves. Yeah. Dark elves. <laughs> better than Camry. Better than Camry. Uh, Better than Wood Elves. I'd rage if you put them below Wood Elves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better than Lizardmen. Yeah. yeah. Um, better than Beastmen. And mm-hmm. better than... Better than Vampires for the flavour they have. Mm. They, they've got a big variety in flavours. They do. But I, I, like, I would say, Ooh. hear me out right now. Oh, oh really? Are you going to do this? Because... High elves are more annoying in every way, and I hate them. Right. So so much. I mean, but dark elves are annoying too. They're ed- they're fucking edge lords who are like oh, they it's so are, dark but and they've got so much cool stuff evil. going for them they as do. well. Like they've the cold got ones. So much cool stuff. They were dinosaurs but before dinosaurs were cool. My argument for keeping it as is is they wouldn't exist without the high elves. It's what I'm kind of thinking. It's like yeah. they wouldn't be the dark elves if there weren't the high elves to to to. Like I, I, does that counteract? I, oh, thank you for driving past so loud. Uh, does that counteract how cool, how like badass the dark elves are comparative to the high elves, though? Mm, it, it's like the black ships. Are you kidding me? Those are so oh, it, fucking cool. They're probably the the, the coolest faction, right? Because Ed, Edge Lord. So it's but... it's it's how it balances out. You know, like yeah, does that it, really put the high elves above them just because they're like responsible for their creation almost? I, I'm I'm gonna be. I have to be somewhat <laughs> consistent in my uh-huh, logic. Uh huh. Because I don't want to shift halfway through. Oh, like, dude, it's so, cool. My job here is to tempt you yeah, into, like, I, torturing yourself. I think I am going to keep them where they are. Okay. But yeah. I would love to have a, a dark elf army and just kill the high elves all here, day long. Here's, here's a question for you. Yep. In terms of better or worse, just in general. Yeah. Dark elves... Dwarves, Dark Elves, Chaos, is there, does that change the High Elves at all for you? I, I would say High Elves are probably the second coolest in terms of just like how much I would fanboy them. So, like, would you, like, because if you'd put the Dark Elves above the Dwarves in this instance, that means that the High Elves might go higher. Because I, I like, I, I can yeah. vibe, I can vibe with your reasoning, but I'd put the Dark Elves in that reasoning, above the dwarves, because the dwarves just, you know, lack a bit of character for me. Yeah, I... I'm not trying I... to influence you, I'm just trying to torture yeah, you with trying to figure this I... shit out. <laughs> I could see the argument for having the, the two elves paired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and maybe being like, okay, the elves have a bigger impact on the setting than the dwarves do. And the dwarves would probably be paired with Skaven in my mind. So I would say I'm going to move high elves okay. and dark elves above dwarves. Okay. Because I, 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 I'm, I've, I'm, it makes more sense to me to pair them like this, which is weird, but I just yeah. feel no. I have to do that. I mean, if you, if you want to put High Elves above Dark Elves, you're just going to have to deal with people who see this tier list and go, no, Hey, Hydra, fine. we need to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah and, and High Elves, I still, I'm going to stick to the logic, they have to be above Dark Elves, because it's, I, I see that it's like a bait. Dark elves can't be as cool without the high elves, so I have to pay respects to the high elves. Fair enough. Just despite the fact I hate them. So it doesn't make sense, but maybe it will when we're done. Sure. Who knows? (laughs) You'll you'll go back and you'll be like, my God, why did I do this? Well, it's all down to the logic, because if it was just me in a shop, which which one would I buy right now? Yeah. It would be a different thing. But I but I'm putting in logic here. I mean, when you 
when you tier list, you kind of have like a a value in your head, and you kind of like figure out. And as you go, you can actually like like when I did it with Josh, and he did the VTM clans. There were instances where he'd like he'd be like, "Oh, dwarves or 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 dark elder uh, or dark elves." And he's like, oh, really, really, uh, really, really difficult. And then I'm like, dwarves or high elves? And he's like, oh, easily above. And I'm like, does that mean that we have to switch those around? Because you decided yeah. much easier for the one that was above. So yeah, my yeah, yeah I, I I I feel a bit bad for dwarves going lower, but equally I feel that the the L L-O... hmm. yeah. I mean, I mean, like, because... like for the one of the ways I use to tier things is like, uh, is is like I tier things. This is why I run this tier list the way I do because I tier things against each other. For me, I find the lizard men like I agree with your listing, but I also find the lizard men much more interesting, and I like them more than the dwarves. Mm. Which would drop the dwarves mm. down, but maybe not all the way, which men, means that the lizard men, go, you know, it's yeah. That I I've gone with a different value. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So and which that's... is which has tainted this. No, 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 you know, no. It's, well, it's... not tainted, but slanted it in in a particular direction. It, it's it's um... all, it's all good because it's it's ultimately your opinion and your choice on like what you like and what you don't like and what yeah. vibes with you. Um, I, I, I'll keep it as is, but my mind keeps going to moving the dwarfs back. But 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 for now, I'm going to keep them where they are. Yeah, I mean, like this is the thing as well is sometimes when you think about a certain faction, like the vampire counts, you think about the vampires. You don't think about the bland, like faceless skeleton army that you end up with, or like mm. zombies and shit like that. But then you think like Strigoi are really cool. Um, you know, Kemri are fucking resplendent, like the high elves. But they're also I, just mummies, you know. I hate to do this, but I've I've got to put the the dwarfs. I've got to put the dwarfs back. Okay. I've got to do it. Are they They've worse got to than go the vampire, vampire counts? counts? The, the, oh, they're, they're going back. Oh, okay, okay. The, the the dwarfs are going between chaos and elves again. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah, that that just that's that sits right in my head now. Are the dwarfs more interesting than chaos? No. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, <laughs> yeah. we will f finish with my favorite boys, so we'll go with orcs. Yep, um, better than better than Camry. Yeah, better better than wood elves. Yep, better than uh, better than lizardmen. Better than basemen. Yep, still better than vampires. Yep, and like their edge lord value of dark elves is cooler but as a overall orcs are cooler yeah you've got like the fanatics the night goblins you know yeah. the... the 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 teenager in me is like yeah like kinky yeah. witch elves like yeah that's uh, but cool. also the teenager but... uh, the teenager and everyone is probably like orcs are fucking silly and fun you know like yeah orcs are just it's hard there's not something to love orcs. more primal about them and and in in in, in a, like not just the orcs being savage but in in terms of what it what it appeals to inside yeah. of you it's just like yeah th this is just chaotic destructive stuff that is co comedic as well and it's yeah. just great um I'd, i would i i'm gonna put them above high elves actually i vibe with that the really important one is this one which is orcs mm. like if you put the orcs below the dwarves the orcs will come around and kick your ass yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> like it's so. So the orcs and and the the orcs and the dwarfs kind of wrestle with each other so much yeah. that I I feel like they deserve to be next to each other. Well, you'd say that, but the orc, the the empire, and the vampire counts wrestle with each other so much. That that is true. So that's not a not a good line of logic. Yeah, no, it's, I, it's, I think it's just why I like the pictures the, next to each other. Yeah, yeah. It's kind I, of like... I, I like I'm messing with you in the sense of you know because that is very true for the empire and the vampire lords. At the mm, same time, the orcs and dwarves are so integral to each other because they have been yeah. fighting for like you know. I feel that the orcs will be like they're the orcs are just super important to the setting the green yeah. skins so. 
I mean, you can, you can make the argument really that beastmen are as well, but yeah. I, well, you I, can make I, the I, argument for any of them really. Like true, true, the, true. the lizard uh, men are basically keeping the world together. Yeah, I think I'm I I may lead orcs above dwarfs. Yep, I'm with you there. To be honest, uh, I'd respect think... you if you kept the dwarves above. Like I'd be like, that's fine, but I would also disagree. <laughs> yeah, I part of me is like, okay, they're a better antagonist than Chaos is in many ways. Yeah, but I they're more of a threat than Chaos in a weird way. They're not corruptive. Yeah. But they, they're just bare-faced fucking threat because they're so warlike. and. I'm going to put them... The chaos is like the, the, the doomsday threat in some ways, but orcs are, are just... They? There's Cause, something cause about them. There's, well, a, there's yeah. a group that would disagree with you with them or boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, we, you're not going to like me with Skaven. No, dude, it's fine, like... This uh, this is your list. I the only reason okay. the only reason I question you is to make this hotter. Yeah, I I don't gonna stick with orcs for a second. I think they could go and stay where they are. Okay. So yeah, we're starting to get a look at. A, uh, I'll just and, like... and this is this is because I'm seeing chaos as more than the tabletop faction. Yeah. There we go. So your top five currently are Empire, then Chaos, Orcs, then Dwarves, then High Elves. Which means that your Dark Elves are in the 6 to 10, top 10, not top 5. That's okay. Yeah? You, would you? Sorry, one second. Would you like to say High Elves are in my top 5? Yes. <laughs> because this, this no, is no. like no, no, it's not a yes or no. It's a say yeah. it. I, I want you to yeah. say it. I also in my top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I, 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 I need to give them the respect. That's fine. Yeah, the respect is there. I, I, I don't. Want when to you them. when you put Skaven at bottom, we're gonna have some fucking words after the show. But, okay. <laughs> but... Well, they're better than Kemri. I'll okay. give you that. Cool. And they're better than Wood Elves. Yeah. And they're better than lizard men. Okay. I. Oh, oh lord, are they? They're better than beastmen. Okay. I will give you that. And they are better than vampire counts. Okay. But that's where I draw the line. Really. I. I could maybe swap them once more, but I. For me, they've never felt as integral as 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 like greenskins or chaos. I don't know why. In integral as in underneath every. <laughs> they feel more like an afterthought to me. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I I can I can see that perspective. Like, I think that's partially my journey with the hobby. Is like when as I've grown up. Yeah. Though, I'll, I'll just um, I'll switch this to this uh, for now. Are you happy with? Uh, like Norsco being here in Britonia, like or, or basically have a look over while I talk for a second. Okay. And um just tell me if you want to switch anything if 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 anything doesn't really like jive with you. Uh, so this is eleven to twelve there. Um so I love orcs. Uh if I was to do this myself it would torture me because I have a lot of love for a lot of different things. But I would say, just throwing it out very, very quickly, my top uh, would be, like, Skaven, Dark, El Dark Elves, Orcs, Im uh, Imp Empire, and Chaos, probably. Maybe Lizardmen would be a bit... would be higher and stuff, but... For the most part, I don't disagree with your um, assessment. Uh, Kemri and Wood Elves are kind of, like... A, they're almost with a twist, you know? Mm. Um, they have their own personalities, but they are just this thing, but different. Yeah. Uh, orcs, orcs, dwarves, the Empire, Chaos, and High Elves are all the traditional template of the thing. That's the thing. The reason why I love Skaven so much is because they are unique. They, they have a uniqueness that none of the other factions do. They are crazy, swarmy rat men who, like, 
breathed under every other faction and just randomly blast out you know you've got you've got their whole addiction to warp stone you've got them killing each other all the time uh you've got them like the warp fire throwers the jezails um the screaming the screaming bell the the doom wheel mm. there's the doom bell and the screaming wheel i can't remember which way it goes but the 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 doom wheel um the uh like the rat ogres and clan molder and clan eshin like you got the edgy assassins you got the fucking like all of this shit is just i know what you mean when you say you know they're kind of an afterthought but because i loved skaven on first look so much as an army yeah. I looked into all the like details of them and I like fell in love with Skaven. Like Skaven are my favorite. Um yep. Orcs are very close second for me because Orcs yeah. have the Orcs have the same vibe as Skaven, but they're less unique because they've been done to death in fantasy. Um But when you're talking mm. when you're talking like integral to the setting. Yeah, I would put Skaven about there, maybe above Dark El Dark Elves. Because... That's what I I, know, I think. Bretonia need to go one to the left. Okay. That's my my one of potentially two adaptations, and yeah. I would say Bretonia probably need to go just behind Vampire Counts, even another two to the left, because I do think they add they add more than Tilia does, yeah. definitely. Uh, so I think that I'm happy with there now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would move Norska above the other two uh i'd moved norska above tilia yeah that's that's fair i think um by yeah i'm, I'm gonna have them above Til tilia's kind of like known for me yeah almost where it's just like okay it's a thing but it's it's basically empire almost so i i, I actually would say that i i do my the other thing i was thinking of is skaven above dark elves okay Dude, um, like, don't don't let me influence you. No, this no, no. Just... I, that was on, that was on my brain because, like, dark elves are cooler, but I actually do quite like Skaven. For yeah. me, Skaven and orcs are the other way around. So for me, Skaven are orcs with engineering underground, rather oh, than yeah, totally. Like, like so I, I feel like so the way high elves and dark elves work, I'm like, okay, the dark elves are what they are because the high elves exist, and I I kind of feel like the Skaven are. They're, they're complemented by the orcs in a yeah. way because because they I, I think that i would keep that there and say that i would rather play the six to ten tier yeah but my respect goes to the one to five tier the the ogs basically take yeah, the top tier like, for overall but yeah. the like the like personal aesthetic um for playing with or for you know like yeah, yeah. I, I can i can see that to be honest because like so it's the top this... tier, aside from chaos, are very, very generic. Yeah, just fantasy yeah. in general. The, yeah, that that I this is what the tier list represents to me is a what I tip my hat to, yeah. and I tip my hat the most to those top five. But I would not want to necessarily play them. Maybe, yeah. maybe Orcs. I would do humans or like a side type of dwarves. Like you, dude, but, come on, you totally play orcs. They're so much fun to play. Oh yeah, I used to collect. I used to collect orc and goblins. Yeah. I night elves in particular. Like I don't like the bog standards of of a lot of them. I, I like the offshoots because I like things to be different. Yeah. So the six to ten though are probably if I could collect now are what I would be more likely to. Of which yeah. the first four are the only ones I would actually buy. Well, oh, I, like for painting, my top uh, like if we're talking painting, my top ones would probably be uh, Camry, Lizard Men, and Dark Elves because I think they'd yeah. be really interesting to paint. Like Skaven would probably be right down the bottom for painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, painting is a whole, a whole, is a whole other, other, whole other beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. the the one thing I was gonna say is like you said, you know, Skaven are uh, like you know, uh, humans with engineering or orcs like, with engineering. Orcs with engineering. I would say they're actually dwarves with engineering. Yeah, that they are the they're like, like they're, the, well, the, not even with engineering, they're just evil dwarves, basically. Yeah, the, yeah, they they are in like the in opposition to, yeah. but they're like their closest. If you were to give orcs gun and send them underground, they they would have a lot in common with Skaven. Mm, uh, I, 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 I they're would, not the same. 
yeah. I would say. But yeah. they, I would say that would be the, the closest faction to the Skaven it, it, um, in terms you, of... Yeah, if, if you were to ask me to argue against Skaven as my favourite faction, I'd probably, like, end up comparing them to Dwarves a lot, where it's like... Yeah. The, like, the disinteresting thing about them is they are dwarves if they were rats and had a chaos god essentially yeah you know like just infighting and angry and, yeah no, you know, no, 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 like, definitely yeah definitely i, I i'm yeah. i'm drawing my, what makes an opposite I, I think at a different point in the comparison side of sort of yeah but, well but I, I i see i i see where you're coming from there if, yeah. if orcs were uh, if dwarfs were uh yeah i i i, I think i just v view it from a different but I see the point. Also, can we both agree that Chaos Dwarves are, like, even though they're not on the here, they should be last? I really like them. Really? I Yeah, I just, I don't really? see there's any need oh, God, for them. I hate them. They're so pointless. I don't pointless. think they add much, but I, I really like the aesthetic. It's, 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 it was, it was, it's literally, Chaos exists. We have yeah. evils of most other factions. Let's have evil dwarves. And I was totally. always, I was always just like, why though? They're so dumb. Look, look, look! All I'm going to say is that they're the dark elves of dwarves. They are. They are. Edge, edge lord, for, cool factor. Except for they're not interesting, edge lord. <laughs> they're just. They just sit under yeah. their fucking mountains, and no one talks about them. My my concern is that GW never fleshed them out properly. Oh but yeah, yeah. The, the big hats are where it's at. You you it's... have. They have a certain Cossack feel to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I'll agree with you in that the aesthetic has potential, yeah. but they were never developed, so they yeah, super. Yeah, for sure. They, they I think that's what goblins. makes them appealing to me as well. It's, it's like a what if. Faction. Yeah. How about ogres? Ogres, I. Oh I, god, I hate them. Yeah. The, I, the they ogre would lords be, are just like it, why? They would be in my eleven to twelve ish. <clears throat> like both of those would be in my eleven to twelve. I think. Yeah. I I feel a bit bad that Kemri's last, but also no, I, mean, I feel like I know why they're there. The thing is, is like taking out the Wither Twist, all of these factions are super cool. Yeah. I love them all. Like even the ones I hate. Yeah. It's it's it, just it's... it's just a matter of tearing them against each other where you're like, yeah, Kemri are really cool looking, but they don't have much personality. Yeah. Some of them <clears> I love <throat> and some I love to hate. Yeah. And some are varying degrees of I love, and some of them are varying like, degrees of I love to hate. Wood Elves, I, for Wood Elves, I'm like, man, they're really super cool, but I love the factions that hate them, so I kind of hate them too. Yeah. You yeah. know. <clears throat> um, yeah. But, yeah, so we're kind of getting towards the uh, the, the wrap-up uh, and, and the finish mm. of, of, the, of the brawl. I hope uh, you enjoyed the horrific experience that is tier listing things you love <laughs> yeah it, it's and I'm, I'm fairly pleased but provided there's the caveat and disclaimer of the, mm. these are the criteria I no no they're like this is, this, is, this is going to people without context no good good <laughs> and everyone's gonna be like good. empire number one really mm, okay okay, okay. I, I would stick with that above or above all mm. that, that's partially the role play game though because I've, yeah. I've got so much fluff in my head from reichland that I just feel like Reichland is the world. Yeah. Uh, that 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 there's definitely like human bias in there as a result. But but that's yeah, fine. I, I mean, like it's it's like we said before. Without the Empire, it make the world makes no sense. Yeah. It, like, it's, like they, they're just there wouldn't be any there. there wouldn't be any fun in just playing orc. Like it's always fun to beat on dwarves with orcs, but without yeah. the without the humans there to like provide the kind of like human perspective you couldn't vibe with it because you're just weird green things hitting on weird short things underground and it's like where's the fun in that you know you have to totally. have the perspective so i i agree with you like for me skaven the the only one that would be easy for me is skaven being number one just because yeah i'm they're my boys but yep. uh <clears throat> i i would i would probably die in the process of trying to rank these things because i i would mm. i would flip flop so much and i'd just be like there are there are instances where i'm like i like the dark elder more than the orcs except i don't because yeah. I, I like the orcs 
more than chaos, but I kind of like chaos more than the dark elves. Yep. So I'd be in a, I'd be in a, I'd be in a, a logic loop where I'd be continually shifting those three because yeah, yep. it doesn't make I any sense. If, um, if if I were to be asked what would you like to like play on tabletop right now, yeah, I would say my tier list would be take one to five and put them below <laughs> eleven to twelve. Yeah. Um, I can see that. And that would be my new tier list, but Skaven would be put after Vampire Counts. Ooh, you bitch. Yeah. I, I would rather be Vampire first, then Dark Elf, then Skaven if I had to collect right now. Yeah. Um, but mm, we'll see. Um, we'll see. So, yeah. I, yeah, we, we have... Uh... We have our little, what I call an exit interview with with Hydra. I'm sure we'll have you back on the Wandering in, in again. I hope. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll um, be around. I, I'd I'd like to um you know guest on something you do. So you know we'll talk about that at some point. Sure, 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 um, sure, sure. And uh, yeah, like I hope you enjoyed Sunkissed. It was a long campaign, and like I said to Josh, like I appreciate you sticking with the show for so long because it was a. Uh, a bigger commitment than I think any of us thought it was going to be in terms of length, uh, and possibly yeah, like yeah. brain space. <laughs> yeah, there, there were, I mean, there was a lot happened. There was it a did. lot of stuff and things, but but in 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 a in a good way too. Yeah. Like I, I, Sunkist has given me lots to think about and lots of uh, lots of memories and lots of lots of things in my head. So so that that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, good. definitely. So, yeah, um, lots, lots to do. And uh, so. Past that, uh, everyone watching, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we are not going to be doing a uh, live snapshot Nahari because uh, I had a little chat with, with Tess and I think we need to talk about a couple of things like offline and so we're going to do a snapshot that will be out in the next couple of days um, and next week, hopefully, I'll have another chat with Tess. Next week, hopefully, we'll do a live Nahari snapshot um, because Tess still has a little bit of, uh, recovery to go, so probably won't be able to ne make next, uh, next Monday. But next Wednesday, um, the, because I don't have any other players who have, who are currently, like, like, leaving, uh, Sunkist, uh, the plan is, during this bar brawl, I'm going to try and get Bentham, depending on his availability, to come in and talk about Roll For It and also The Last Ditch, and uh, then he will make me do a 40k faction tier list. And I'm going to die. Because <laughs> mm. I've already looked at it, and it, my brain was bleeding after just looking at it and thinking about it. So Yeah, good luck with that. Dude, like, mate. Every faction is sold based off of being cooler than the others. Yeah. And, it, it, like, like <laughs> the, the tier list itself uh, that I looked at, I, I may switch them around, but... The tier list I looked at is like, like Space Marine factions as well. Oh. As you and there's like, it's like, I there'll be points where I'm putting like the Lamenters and the Salamanders up the top of my list, and the Ultra Breeds down the bottom, and like the Space Marines. It's like, how can you, how can you take things that are exactly the same and put them in such different places? It's like because of forty k, forty k, man, fucking. Personal grievances will come out in the shit. tier list. Maybe it's a good way to exercise them. Yeah, yeah. Or cement them and justify them. So yeah, um, uh, that that's it for today, guys. Uh, next week we'll probably go on longer uh, as we do the live Nahari snapshot after the the brawl, uh, the bar brawl. Next next week will be yeah more more of this with with a, a sheepy having to do a tier list, which will be painful and, and, and horrific. Uh, it may mean we need Bentham on here twice just to make him do a tier list of something. Probably like factory PC games. <laughs> like, what's your favourite mm. PC game? Uh, so, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, we're going to the outro now. So, uh, you know, be prepared for uh, drinking, punching, and, uh, and carousing. And, uh, yes, thanks, Hydra, for doing this little extra thing. No and sweat just the show in general and uh, we'll see you guys next week thank you for having me and bye bye <laughs>